I'd like to call to order the September 22nd meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, we have a fairly full agenda tonight, starting out with some discussion on the Central School for the Occupancy and Leasing, and then a little bit about its design scope. Uh, at 7.30 we have the continuance of a environmental design review hearing for the Caridian Realty Trust, which is the Boston Motorsports site at 1098 Mass Ave. And then at 8.30 we have another environmental design review hearing for the same property um, for Verizon's antennas. 9 o'clock we're going to discuss uh, building rental requests for the Central School, 23 Maple Street. And we may possibly go into executive session. We'll discuss that with the board. So I wanted to get right into our first agenda item, but I, I wanted to recognize that I believe there's a lot of people here from the Council of Aging and from the Arlington Senior mm -hmm. Association. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do tonight is Carol's going to introduce some of the background and the history and mm -hmm. what's been happening in the recent, very recent few months. Um, she's going to give us some background for the board. Then the board is going to have an opportunity to comment, to ask questions. Then if we have time and there's people that are interested, we'll take comments from the public. So if you have questions, if you could hold it until after the board has a chance to ask their questions and comment, that would be really appreciated. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Carol to give us a little bit of a summary. Okay. Uh, the board recalls that for some time on your work program we've been We've had the matter of leases in two of the ARB buildings in um, 23 Maple Street and the Central School. Um, over the last few months, I've been trying to focus this work. Um, 23 Maple Street is fairly straightforward. Their lease expired. They were at the end of their extensions. Uh, they would like to stay in the building. We have a draft RFP we're working on, and we expect that should not be uh, uh, should not take very long to get them retenanted. There may be others competing for the lease, but we're not aware of any at this time. Of course, it will be posted and advertised. Uh, right now, it's it's occupied by the Northeast Family Institute. They've been there for many years. It's a good tenant. Um, so they are interested and they are aware that we're preparing to issue a request for proposal to retenant the space. Uh, the central school has two spaces we're going to talk about. One is occupied by the Mystic River Watershed Association, which was a uh, organization that operated basically out of people's homes initially. And at one point during the ur urban renewal of the building, after everything was leased up, there was space remaining, uh, about 769 square feet. Actually, it was less than that, but since, the, since then, it's been increased to about 769 square feet of space that was offered to the Mystic of Watershed Association. They do water quality testing and open space and natural resources protection related to the Mystic River watershed. They were offered the space because of the services they provide to the town, but it's important to get all of the properties that the, under the ARB's control, re-tenanted through a procurement process at this point because the term of the urban renewal has um, concluded. There's a question as to whether you absolutely need to go through an RFP, but I think it's very important because these leases have not, in a couple instances, some of these have never gone to RFP, um, and it's. So it's, the, it's 23 Maple Street, it's um, District River Watershed Association, and I think the, fo the primary focus that we are going to discuss is space that's been occupied by the Arlington Seniors Association. The Seniors Association is a nonprofit organization that occupies about 7,074 square feet of space in the Central School. The Council on Aging, it, it, the, the Arlington Council on Aging occupies about 1,400 square feet of space. There's been an increase in demand for services from the Council on Aging. And we're, I'm recommending to the board that space that's been occupied by the Arlington Seniors Association be allocated to the Council on Aging 
and that an office in the central school be put out for to bid through our, a request for proposal process that and we would invite the Arlington Seniors Association to bid on that space if they would like to rent that space for their office headquarters. They would be encouraged and have been encouraged to continue all of their programming in the building as, and further to my recommendation, is that that programming would be scheduled, all daytime senior programming would be scheduled and coordinated through the Council on Aging. So I'm recommending that this be done in two ways that first a request for proposal the request for proposal be issued but also um, the change that I'm recommending very soon is that three spaces that are currently on three office spaces that are currently occupied by their Arlington Seniors Association be conveyed as soon as possible to the Council on Aging to assist the Council on Aging in meeting HIPAA requirements. HIPAA is the Health Insurance Portability and Privacy Act. And currently, the Council on Aging has to go to great lengths to ensure the privacy and confidentiality of clients who are seeking services through the Council on Aging. With these spaces, it would be more efficient and would they be able to respond quicker to those requests for service to the Council on Aging. That basically is it. In a nutshell, we could talk more about the programming, we could talk more about the schedule, but that's the general recommendation if the board has any questions about that. Later on, um, on the agenda, we, would, we could talk more specifically about the requests for proposals and the setting the minimum rent that we would include in those proposals but I first wanted to present to the board the general recommendation. So we're talking about three different buildings with, within this urban renewal account that we have. The 23 Maple Street, the Central School, which has two office spaces that we're talking about, the Myra office space, and an office space for possibly the Seniors Association, if they so desire to have that as an office space. And then the third one is the Jason Cutter, but Jason Cutter, we're not putting anything out no. for RFP right that's now. That's the third building, that's correct, but we're not doing any tenanting in the Jefferson Cutter house. So we're talking about three separate RFP processes. That's right. Three separate RFPs, three separate rental rates that we're looking at, and, and qualifying <coughs> factors within those RFPs. So I can go around and maybe we can just ask questions, make comments if you have any. Sure. Open it up to the board. Uh, Carol, so uh, currently um, Council on Aging occupies some space at the Central School. They have about a, a, a 1,500 square feet. Is that it appears from the floor plan that they have about 1,400 square feet, about a little more than 1,400 square feet. And Council on Aging is a division of the <coughs> Board of Health. Uh, for our <coughs> it's a division energy. of the town. It's under the um, departmental umbrella of the health Department of Health and Human Services. Now, do, is there a lease for the Board of Health, or is that because it's a town body not required to have? We don't have a lease with the Department of Health and Human Services. No, I don't, nor does the Department of Planning and Community Development pay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for example. So it's not required to put that out to procurement law, all of that? Correct. Only if it's a non-departmental type of use? A, a governmental entity can't convey a good or service without going through a procurement law. Okay, unless it's going to uh, To the family, so to speak, another body. town entity. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, I don't have too much. Um, so from the perspective of, so currently those two entities are not, 23 Maple, a little different, they're on a month to month at this point. Um, with respect to the Central School though, they, um, there is no uh, lease or any kind of um, uh, division of liability or anything else with the folks uh, either in uh, Mystic River Watershed 
I won't say MWRA, but it's probably the exact opposite of the MWRA. Uh, Myra. And, yeah, Myra. Is that the okay? Myra, and uh, and the uh, Seniors Association. Correct. That they do not have leases, therefore there is no um, documented um, what would happen with liability or anything else in those spaces currently. Correct. That's right. That that is one of the concerns: is the concern for liability, the concern for um, fair and equal access. Yeah. Um, no, I think uh, I, I think that, and the Arlington Seniors Association is being encouraged to um, provide their programs uh, to coordinate it through uh, the Council on Aging. Yes. Okay. Yes. And my understanding is that the um, leadership of the Seniors Association has begun to meet with personnel from the Department of Health and Human Services to try to work out the details, the practical details Great. of how this will unfold. Great. Okay. Thank you. I don't think I have any questions that you were answered just now. So the two boards fit in that building now, or is there a question about getting more space? The Council on Aging and the ASA. The space that's occupied by the Arlington Seniors Association is arguably relatively underutilized compared to the space that's occupied by the Council on Aging. That's why I'm recommending a reallocation of space. And is that described here, or is that coming out in discussions between the two? I <coughs> received a letter this spring from the Council on Aging, and I met with the Council on Aging board members about their need for space and other issues with the building. Uh, I have been aware for some time of the shortcomings of the space that the Council on Aging staff operates in. So that's the discussion, the next discussion, or is that the subject right now? That that would be addressed in part. But the, the important, the really important thing is to try to get all of the ARB buildings retenanted and and tenanted properly through procurement law. On the way to doing that, one of the things that I looked at was how are we using the space in the building right now, and so part of this currently is if we're going to tenant these buildings, if we're going to go through a request for proposals procurement process, we need to define the space. What space are we leasing? And I'm recommending that we lease a, an office, about 300 square feet of office space, which is a fraction of what the ASA currently occupies. They would still be encouraged to activate other space in the building to use it to program uh, activities for seniors as scheduled through the Council on Aging though. So I'm also recommending that the control of this space, control of all of the space shift to the Council on Aging, the daytime use of that floor for seniors would shift to the Council on Aging. It would be we are expecting and hoping that the seniors association would continue to use it. <laughs> But as far as a space that they would have exclusive right to, I'm recommending about 300 square feet. And there is a, a, a room that they currently occupy that would be put out to lease, and right. you would hope that they would. And then they'd have a shared relation, a shared arrangement in some way with the COA on the majority. That's right. The more space. That's what this is. That's what we're envisioning. That's what we hope. And that might relieve achieve. the. The space issue. Um, it might help if I show you a floor plan. Because if you take the 1700 and then you're only taking 300 of it, it throws back. So there's also, let me show you a couple things. If I could just unroll this for a moment. They currently occupy 1400 square feet. They would only occupy 300 that have some kind of shared relationship. Right. I think the notion is they would coordinate their programs through the COA. The COA would become the, the, the tenant. No, the council on aging would, just as, uh, for example, the let, let's use the analogy of the planning department currently schedules the public's use of the um, space in the evening right. and weekends. Right. The council on aging would schedule the use of this space 
during the daytime for seniors. So I'm at a little disadvantage because I'm upside down because I want you to be able to see what we're talking about. But that's okay. I can read them upside down. <laughs> You're good at that. You've got, been doing that for years. Okay. There are spaces here at the ground level that I'm recommending be vacated by the Senior Association and occupied by the Council on Aging to assist the Council on Aging to provide them the space for confidential consultation right. to be hit up. That would happen soonest if the board accepted this recommendation. The rest of this space is currently used exclusively by the Arlington Seniors Association during the day, except for this kitchen area, which is used by Minuteman Senior Services to provide meals. So this space would be scheduled and programmed it would be scheduled and coordinated through the Council on Aging, but some of that is, we hope, would be for some of the Seniors Association programming that's currently provided. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a schedule that I can show you of the Department of Health and Human Services is committing to make, making sure that there is no cessation of senior programming that's currently offered, and they're interested in expanding programming. Um, Christine Bargiorno, the um, Director of Public Human Services, is here, and she showed us on this schedule. The first sheet is the programming that's currently offered by the Seniors Association, and the lunch is offered by Minuteman Senior Services. The next page is showing the Arlington Seniors Association programs with Council on Aging proposed programs, if they are able to coordinate the use of the space. Got it. It's a long-winded answer, well, I but I wanted that. to I understand that. give you a so the whole idea is really to strengthen the programming for seniors by having everything be scheduled by the Council on Aging and fold in all of the current senior programming and expand it. At the same time giving the HIPAA requirements for the... At the same time providing office needed. space for private consultations to right. meet HIPAA expanding the services to all seniors in town. And then so, does uh, Mystic still live up in the EVE? There'll be a separate office space that would be a separate RFP. That would be a that. separate request for Separate request, okay. okay. Yeah. So that's, right. so, so we'll come down to two, 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 there'll be two for this building. Two for this building. Gotcha. That's right. Gotcha. Okay. And then one for 23 Maple. Right. Which is Northeast Family, Family Services. services. Yeah. I just said it and I forgot. Family okay. Services. Yeah, right. Get the whole thing. And they want to they want it to be. They're very stay interested in staying. They recognize that it's a competitive process and that they'll be competing with other, potentially competing with others for the space. So all three spaces will be competitive processes, and we'll be reviewing the RFP at some point okay. before it goes out. Carol, could you point out on the plan where the 300 square foot office is that would be up for bid? Okay. That's this and. Currently, access is through this room. Mm -hmm. We would cons we would explore the possibility of cutting through. Possibly doing that if necessary, putting a, a door there. If this is still used by for seniors, it might be fine to continue access mm -hmm. through this room. Can you see that? Yeah. Any other questions from the board or comments? Um, I wanted to ask Christine first if she has any comments, the Director of Health and Human Services. Mm -hmm. Could you say your last name? Christine Bongiorno. Bongiorno. I didn't want to mangle it. <laughs> sure. Um, I think what you have before you um, really is a decision to improve services for seniors in the community. I think the goal um, that we're, we're trying to meet is really 
um, to provide the highest level of services and, and, and more, uh, more services. Um, we, we're committed to partnering with the ASA, we've already begun meeting, um, to really make this work and to not eliminate programs. I don't think this is an opportunity for us to say we don't want what the ASA is offering. I think we want to just include uh, more programs and more programming for seniors. In addition to um, the need for additional office space, we've got three and four people in various offices in, this, in, in the Council on Aging space. And by uh, increasing the number of confidential office spaces, we really hope to be able to offer more um, direct um, financial planning, legal advice. Um, you know, right now we, we, we're always shuffling and trying to, to maneuver and uh, our, our, our hope is that by having some additional confidential workspaces, um, we can really provide a higher level of service in addition to some more really um, good programs that we can offer. How many employees do you have coming in and out of the, the space? Um, so we have um, prob probably about 12 to, to, to 14 employees. And then in addition to that, mm -hmm. we have a number of grant employees, uh, interns, um, which could be up to 30 a day. So it, it's, it's an incredibly um, busy office. And you mentioned 1,400 square feet. That's 1,400 square feet for uh, everyone. And there are a lot of people on the road and coming in. Okay, so now I'm gonna take questions from the public and- Can we speak up? Yeah, we can go in order or we can just First come, Does first serve, raise hands. I think this woman back here had started to yes. ask. Uh, Could you state your name first yeah, sure. and the organization? Uh, I live on Academy Street. I'm sorry, can you start again? I was still talking. Yes, my name is Miriam Levine. I live on Academy Street. And I have a couple of questions. Uh, can you calculate <coughs> for me the uh, reduction of the space for the, uh, that we are talking about that will be for the senior association? because it was very difficult to hear uh, the presentation and not get a sense about reduction. So we're reducing the amount of space available to the senior association by, what would you calculate? How many percentage? The amount of space that will be available to the seniors association, we're hoping won't change because it will still be available for scheduling programs for the for seniors through the Council on Aging. The recommendation would be that programming for the association would be scheduled in the same space through the Council on Aging. So it's intended to be shared space as it always should have been shared space? Because it's a it's a building that needs to to go through a leasing process if it's not shared space for all seniors? So when it starts to become uh, thought of as ownership by one organization, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then it we would need to put the whole building out for procurement, which we're not interested in doing. Okay, so who, who will be in charge of the scheduling? The Council on Aging will be in charge of the daytime scheduling. So all of the senior association programming that will be folded in will be scheduled through the Council on Aging. Why? And who, who's the person who will be in charge of that? The director Susan. is Susan Carr. Oh. She's here tonight. Okay. Hi, Susan. And, and how will the applications for space and scheduling be handled? What is the procedure? I think all of that will be worked out. I, I don't think this board is going to be discussing all the details of that. Uh-huh. What we're discussing right now is the occupancy and the leasing. Process. I understand that. Right. I understand so all of that, that will be worked out, I think, between the Council of Aging and the leadership of the Senior Association. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. already held some very positive meetings with the leadership, mm -hmm. and I think there was already one meeting that Christine mentions, two meetings that they had talking about the transition, possibly, mm -hmm. um, depending on what the outcome is from this board. So meeting. what I hear you're saying is that there's a transition from uh, uh, community open uh, programs like poetry workshops, yoga classes, to a more a, a program uh, uh, focused more on social work. Is that what I'm hearing? No, Spaces no. for I'm just no. curious. I'm just trying to get the shakedown here. So you talked about one-on-one. -on -one. The first person who spoke 
you were more interested in one-on-one -on -one cal uh, consultations yeah, with people about legal advice and that sort of thing. So it seems to me the emphasis is changing a little bit. Okay, so what we're talking about yeah. is uh, the HIPAA requirements mm -hmm. require private consultation space. Mm -hmm. So right now the Council of Aging cannot meet HIPAA requirements. So mm -hmm. this is a benefit for all seniors. You need mm -hmm. confidential space mm -hmm. for consultations. Mm -hmm. So the most immediate change that we're talking about is shifting into some of those offices that are right now, I think, occupied by the senior association. Mm -hmm. So those will become private consultation offices mm -hmm. for the social workers. Mm -hmm. But the programming that you're questioning, mm -hmm. all of the senior programming we're hoping will still be intact if the seniors are still wanting to maintain those programs and, and hold those activities. Mm -hmm. But they will be expanded greatly with additional community programming, not just the social workers and the private consultation offices, but offering new programming that you haven't offered yet, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. other seniors in town may be interested in. Mm -hmm. And there could be other senior association, or senior groups that exist now that we don't know of or that mm -hmm. will come to be that also want to use the space for different activities. So those will all be well, it's good scheduled to get, through it's good one to get, body. It's good to get clarification. Okay, Thank you. I hope we've answered your question. I Someone, can just yeah. add to that. I mean, I know you don't have the benefit of this handout, but it, I've just made a quick perusal of it, and it looks like all of the existing AC, ASA programs could fit into this matrix of suggested programming through the Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you'll find that the existing programs are going to be accommodated basically in the same space that they are now, uh, well, plus there will be a number of other things that will be offered. Do you want to mention something? Okay, I think we're going we're gonna to try to put a limit on questions so that everybody has a chance. So, Could you state your name and the organization if you'd like? Later? I have letters and... Can you state your name? Yeah. Pauline Bergantino. And your address? Lansdowne, Rhode Arlington. I've been in Arlington for 64 years Wonderful. and with the Arlington Senior Center for 27. And what's going on now is absolutely disgusting because what we are being treated like at the moment is out of context of the way we've been operating for tw since 1981. I have a report here that says sim summary of central school lease issues. This has been going on for 33 years. And every year between the redevelopment board and the selectmen of town, they have allowed us to operate without charging us rental and allowing us to use the first floor completely for our use and not having to share it with anyone. The only time the town stepped in is when we did not need the space at night, they would rent it out and they would take the fee. The rentals would dirty up our poultry, which the Arlington Senior Association paid for. We paid to clean it. We just put a rug in the, the one of the rooms there and we should not have done it because it's not our property, but we did. And all of a sudden, this, there's been a scheme between Arlington Redevelopment Board and the Council on Aging to put us out of business. Because I'll tell you why. I have seen from the newsletter that the Council on Aging is producing programs that is not, should not be their responsibility. That was always part of the ASA. All of a sudden, they have Spanish lessons, they have Chinese art. Why? Don't they have enough to do for the health and welfare of the seniors in town? Be, besides getting involved with all this frilly stuff, inviting the congressman in for lunch? Give me a break. I think that sh they should be investigated because they are creating jobs that are costing the town money where the town offers us no support except the space. They have never spent a cent. And if you read this report from Charlie Lyons going back to 1990, he even admits we've never been an expense for this town. 
but the council aging is a debt to the town and they are affecting the taxpayers of Arlington and I happen to be one for 64 years. So, I think there's much to be investigated here okay, and I okay, want I'm the selectmen to be involved. I'm hearing you. I'd like you to calm down. Okay, I'm, I'm through. We're, we're here to, to hear all of your comments and we're going to hear everybody's comments tonight. I understand your frustration. This is a very big shift in thinking for the whole town, not just the senior association, but it's it's a mandate. It's it's a legal mandate by procurement law. That's that space is a large liability for the town. Why right are now. they? Why do we have to report to them and tell them when we have something? Because, because they are a town department. Well, we are. And you are a nonprofit organization that has been granted access for free for 24 years in a building that legally. I want this to that go legally before it, the selectmen. It was an issue. This uh, is not a matter for the selectmen. The Arlington Redevelopment Board. Then there'll be a report in the front the, page of the Advocate. Then, so is, all the seniors, 60 percent of the population here are seniors. The other 40 percent are taxpayers as well as some of the seniors. Hmm. And if they get the ink, uh, get the inkling that council nation is wasting money on programs that they don't need okay. so they add on more people to okay. hire them All to right. do it. I think we've heard you. Do we have anybody else that has a comment? State your name and your address. Geraldine Navratil, Massachusetts Avenue in Arlington. I'm new here. I would like to know if the 1400 square feet include what we call the mural room and the conference room on the, on the lower level. Those spaces aren't going to be included in this RFP. Why? They're, they were once rented. We did put out a request for proposal in 2008, and there were no takers. And since that time, it's been heavily used in the evenings by town boards, committees, and commissions, and other public groups. So there's a lot of demand for that space in the evenings and weekends. So I'm hesitant to recommend to the board that they have an exclusive lease of that space at this time. That group moved to Broadway because they couldn't compromise with the Arlington Re Redevelopment Board. That's why they moved out and the mural room opened up. They used to be there, but now they're on Broadway. Did but you forget? Yes. But now it is available and it's been used. So why can't that be included in the space that you're talking about? As I explained, there's too much demand for that space right now by public groups. At night, not during the day. But we couldn't convey it. I'm, I'm not recommending to the board that we convey it for exclusive use to an individual tenant because then it would not be available during evenings and weekends. It would be very complicated, and I, I don't think that there would be much of a market for an office tenant who would be satisfied with using it during the day but then allowing the public to use it in the evenings and weekends. I, I, I don't think that's like very likely to happen. I wasn't talking about but that was the okay. only, That's the only way we would we, be able we to We have it. a lot of people here that want to speak, so mm -hmm. we're going to try to limit the amount of time, and, and please let other people speak when, when it's their turn. Okay. Uh, Maria Romano, Beach Road, town meeting member. I need to go back to uh, my people in Precinct 7. Who's going to assume the legal responsibility of that building, who's going to assume the rent, and who's going to handle the liability issue? Is the senior group going to be able to be in there free of any liability? I'm not quite understanding any of this. There will have to be a, a waiver of liability for any user work scheduling through the Council on Aging. Okay. So, again, my second question is, they need to be reassured that the amount of people, the seniors, which is a tremendous amount of our population, will not be compromised in any way by using that space, that their space won't be diminished, that they will have the same programs, they will have the same dances, they will have the same, everything remains That's the what same. We're talking about. That's fine. Then I'm fine with that. That's, if the liability is shifting, because, and the HIPAA, I mean, I understand all of that, and there needs to be privacy issues. We're going to be offering seniors more programs, more 
uh, advantages. And I think this is good. I think the seniors need to know in a very confident way that we're not taking anything away from them, but instead we're rather adding something for them. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then I'm for it. That is the case. Yes, please say your name. Well, I'm, your name. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm address. sorry. Jim Capsidoro, Harris Circle. Thank you. Member of the um, Senior Associ Association. Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, you just said we were losing all of the offices. You're taking, Council on Aging is taking all of those offices next to our drop-in center. Is that what you were saying, 300 square feet? Is no, the 300 square feet, first, this yes, the, the offices near the drop-in center are the ones that would be allocated to the Council on Aging. But the 300 square feet mm -hmm. that I was referring to refers to a different room. You're familiar with the room that's off of the pool room right now? Yes, okay. That's, that's, the, that's the, the space okay. that's about 300 square feet that so we use that out to bid. That we've been using for the... Yeah. For the uh, not rummage, so what are we're we going to put it out to bid. Oh, okay, so that's not going to be anybody's, who, but whoever rents it. Yes, and we, we would, we're hoping, and we've mentioned this to the um, president and vice president of the Seniors Association, okay. and encourage them to be prepared to submit a proposal if the okay. is interested. Okay, that's, that's fair, but how much do we lose in, the, in those office spaces? We now don't have a space for our coordinators or anybody. That could be a headquarters for the main office. If, if the for seniors, everybody's office, you mean? For the Seniors Association headquarters. But isn't that where the Council on Aging is having their, those rooms? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. See, I'm, I'm confused. The 300 yeah, I think, square feet. I think the yeah, I think the confusion is, is that the, the office by the pool room is yes. the one that will go out to RFP in which we would okay. encourage okay. the uh, Arlington Seniors Association to um, right. uh, to bid on, and hopefully that will end up being the office for the Arlington Seniors Association. The offices near the lobby and drop-in area are the ones that will be um, converted over to HIPAA compliant uh, office space for the COA and the social work and nurses and everything else that goes on there. So. And how will, they, how, will, how will you gain privacy in there? I mean, is that you going to put need. up walls and you're going to take all Those that space or just walls. the offices? They already have walls. They have walls and doors. You're sorry? talking about the consultation spaces that were proposed? Yeah, yeah, the three, the storage, the current storage room and TV, the TV, TV office and the coordinator's office. You're taking those, I understand. Yes. The recommendation is that those go Okay, these so... How are you going to get your privacy there? If we're on the other side, you're in the drop-in center. They have doors. Yeah. The, the, they have doors. Right now, the, my understanding is that the social worker for the Council on Aging works in an open workstation. And oh, okay. So the doors are sufficient. Oh, okay. And you, as far as I'm aware, they yes. are. If they aren't, there would be a recommendation. Oh, okay. We have another agenda item later. Um, okay, that's fine. We'll be doing some uh, assessment of possible improvements to rehabilitate some of the space if necessary. Yeah, because it hasn't been rehabilitated since 1984, as you know. So Thank you. Do. Space is ours that you have planned on. Just one room off of the pool room. We've already been thrown out of three rooms, ma'am, and we're going to be Excuse thrown me. out of three more. No Excuse one's being me. thrown out. Can can we let everyone talk, please? We have a few other people that have questions. This yeah. whole thing. Could you say is your name, your yes. address? My, excuse me. My name is Mara Klein Collins, and I'm the chair of the Arlington Council on Aging. Um, I was one of the proponents of the letter that we sent. I work in senior services, and I was very concerned about the HIPAA space and whatever. The other thing we're looking at as this the senior population in Arlington is the largest in the Minuteman service area of all of the towns, and it is expanding as the boomers start to come in. So what mm -hmm. we're trying to do is more what are called evidence-based programs mm -hmm. that have an effect for people and um, do things like that in addition to all the wonderful social programs that are offered now. So we see this as more for all of the seniors, and really we see the ASA and the COA, we do the same thing. We're here for the seniors of Arlington, right. and that building is for the seniors of Arlington. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and we're concerned about the future because there are more coming. We look at, we just added onto our board 
the Vice President of Clinical Services for the Alzheimer's Association, and he's telling us within 10 years, one in three seniors will have Alzheimer's. And so we need to, he calls it, Paul Rea calls it a tsunami, but we need to plan for the future also. And this is a great step towards doing that and being able to serve the seniors. So, thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. Yes. I think so. Thank you. Yes. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi, it's Maureen Jackson, the Lansdowne Road, Arlington. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm with the ASA. I am currently the secretary, and I was with the Council on Aging for many years also. I worked with them. And um, I don't know if the board knows that, you know, when the, um, when the senior center was opened here in 1986, um, Four or five years earlier, the ASA was incorporated, the Arlington Seniors Association, and they raised close to $100,000 to furnish the first two floors of the Seniors Association, you know, with carpeting, computers, desks, everything. Um, as far as I know, they did the kitchen where Minuteman Senior Services is, too. So they raised a lot of money for the start of the Senior Center. And when um, the Council on Aging and the ASA moved in. Council on Aging was um, mainly health and wellness programs, and the mission of the ASA was to promote educational, recreation, and social programs mm -hmm. for the seniors. So for many years, we worked along that line. The Council on Aging did the health and wellness, and we did, you know, the, the educational, recreation, and social needs. But um, now it seems like the Council on Aging is expanding or overlapping because they're doing a lot of the recreational needs too, or you know, social needs. But um, it, I would hate to see the Arlington Seniors Association go. To me, it's yeah. like the um, the Arlington Boys and Girls Club is for the youth of Arlington. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think the Senior Center is means the same thing to the seniors of Arlington, mm -hmm. and we just don't want to go to a podiatry clinic or have right. our blood pressure taken. We need to socialize, have friends here who we can help. sit down and talk to and everything. So um, I'm really sorry to see the Seniors Association being squeezed out kind of because of the, you know, the needed space. And, you know, I'm especially sad that our coordinator won't, Frank Tadley, won't have a prominent space at the Senior Center. But um, I'm sad, but um, I'm very optimistic that things will work out. And I just wanted you and the board to know um, just what the Seniors Association has meant to the seniors of mm -hmm. Arlington. Absolutely. Okay. I think the board recognizes the value that the Seniors Association has had over the years. Mm -hmm. And they want that to continue. Mm -hmm. And what we're understanding from the Council of Aging, from Carol, is that that will continue and it will only become stronger. Right now, I think a large portion of the population of Arlington doesn't distinguish between the Council on Aging and the Arlington Senior Association mm -hmm. because the programming is just the programming and it's in the senior mm -hmm. center and it should be open for all seniors. So I think that's the way most seniors in town view it. So Dr. strengthening Dr. that bond and expanding those programs, it should be a win-win. There's, there's no squeezing out of one body for the other. I think it's more of a merger of bodies, if anything, and having one one body that is a town body to do the scheduling. Yes, that's fine um, if we aren't squeezed out of the scheduling. There's been a few conflicts um, mm -hmm. since the new director came in, but um, hopefully, you know, that, you know, everybody will work it out. You know, it just seems that the ASA was slowly getting squeezed out, and mm -hmm. you know that that you know hurt a lot of people's feelings. So we had very mm -hmm. positive meetings with the ASA leadership, and good. Yes, I think we feel confident that that okay that yeah. that will go smoothly, and that the transition could also be very smooth. Right, and I think we. Um, I've been away for seven weeks and just got back last night, but I know um, we, you know, we usually have about 480 members too, and um, for the Arlington Seniors Association, that you know, newsletters go out too. So, you know, there is a big body of yeah, the Arlington certainly. Seniors Association in Arlington. Okay, thank you for your time. Okay, do we have any new comments? We do need to move along to our next. I have agenda one. Item. I have one very quick comment, and I thank you for allowing me to just, you know, speak at length. Mm -hmm. Just a very quick comment. 
I understand, you know, one in three, we have, we have statistics about one in three people, uh, elderly people will have Alzheimer's. And uh, as soon as I heard that statistics, I thought, oh my goodness, there, we have a statistic and we have this vision of, of these hordes of people in Arlington that need to be taken care of, okay? And I would just like to shift the, the emphasis a little bit uh, and build on what somebody else said about uh, senior citizens uh, uh, also need tremendous opportunities to speak to each other, to use their brains, to become educated, and the emphasis is not always, right, on the downward slope. And what I hear is the opposite as a justification for this shift. So I just, just want to say that. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? I just want to say that the mental health of the senior community is well serviced by the Ellington Seniors Association because we get to meet in groups and talk and share each other's problems and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And I think, lose, you know, to have that up in smoke or confused by, I just don't know. I'm just, well, all I can be is going to continue in that Okay, way. well, so great. one more and question and then we're going to have to. I'm done. Close yeah, the thank you very time. much. My name's Ann Fitzgerald, 162 Summer Street in Ellington. Um, I was a past chair of the, of the COA board. I'm a town meeting member. The, the seniors in Arlington take up almost one quarter of the population, and we are the least best served of the whole of municipal budget. And a huge amount goes to the schools. So that this, this step, I think, is a really good positive step the um, the seniors often get overlooked. Their needs get overlooked. In Minuteman, uh, which serves the under the the low income seniors, they serve more people in Arlington than the other 16 cities and towns. So um, by keeping the senior center a vital place, it's you know there'll be a place for everybody to go have a cup of coffee and, and go to the programs. And um, if we all work together, both the COA and the ASA, um, I think we'll have a very, very vital center. Mm -hmm. But we as seniors need to really be vote. We do a lot of things. We are important, that's the, that's the main message to take, give to the, to the town of Arlington. We are important. And we thank everybody for coming out tonight and for offering your comments. The board needs to hear from Council on Aging, the seniors in town. We very much value the seniors in town. And we know that all of us will one day be there in your ranks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we also want to have a strong facility when we get there. The, the board is also responsible for looking at design changes within the building. Christine's going to present some of those next. Um, we're also looking at outdoor improvements. I know there's a lot of issues with tripping hazards and accessibility. So we're looking at a holistic renovation, hopefully, um, for the center in addition to the programming. So we're hoping that all of this will help strengthen the center for, for years to come. So I think... Um, the board now has before it some recommendations um, that we can act on. Uh, You're holding off on the RFP one, though, correct? Pardon? You're holding off on the RFP one, Um, That's just on the rental request for the RFP, actually, okay. what the rental request would okay. be. So I think what we're looking at now is um, whether we want to approve the COA coordinating. The COA coordinating the scheduling, approve changes in assignment of spaces in the Arlington Senior Center. Um, first off, converting some office space to meet HIPAA requirements. Uh, we're hoping that that could happen maybe by mid-October. So as far as schedule goes, we're hoping that that will be one of the first things that happens. Um, and having the, the RFPs go out. So the RFPs will have to be 
coordinated rental rates will have to be, minimum rental rates will have to be decided, the qualifications for the RFPs would need to be decided. Okay. Well, I could try. Do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I could try to make a motion. Um, um, make a motion to uh, put the uh, first floor um, community senior space under the coordination of the uh, Council on Aging. Um, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing, that there be a reallocation of space, that the COA have the three offices um, on, I believe it's the west side. I got it completely wrong. <laughs> side. Uh, on the east side, um, that the Council on Aging have uh, uh, those offices, um, and uh, that the space um, by the uh, billiard room uh, office, 300 square foot office space in the corner by the billiard room, um, be uh, put out to RFP. Um, and to be discussed, I guess, when we talk about the RFP itself, but uh, certainly um, for the benefit of, of seniors, I think, with a group that um, will help seniors being the first thing. Arlington seniors? Arlington seniors, yes, thank you. Did I get the three things? I think you got everything. Okay. Anybody see anything? That a little messy, missed? but... You got all of that, Carol. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. Aye. Christine, would you decide tonight that, that does that become law or do the selectmen have to approve it? This is not a matter for the selectmen as far as I'm aware. No. Then we can go before the board of the selectmen and bring this situation up with them. Is that correct? The Arlington Redevelopment Board controls that space. It's under the purview of but us, not the selectmen. Town meeting put it under the purview they of the are above you. Redevelopment Board. This they, you have a boss just like they have a boss. The selectmen's bosses are the taxpayers of Arlington. <coughs> Thank you. See, I'd just like to say why can, why can we not, you say that all of the programs now are under the, under the figurehead of the Council on Aging. Why is that not a, a joint, I mean, why can't that be done together? Why can't we both I'm, I have input? The, I'm vote, certain the that vote was be. for the coordination by the COA of programming in the space. The coordination so, of programming in the space and okay. the scheduling will be done by the so COA. So if they say no, Council on Aging says no, we, we That's have no way it's been. Coordination and scheduling will be done. The kind of programs that the ASA hold are entirely different than the responsibility of the council and aging. Right, that's they right. work with the health and welfare of the seniors. We work to entertain them. We understand that. We understand that, but it's a shared space. And as a shared space... Why aren't you using excuse me, space? Excuse me, can I speak? As a shared space, okay. it would benefit from coordination. There has been a lot of tension over the years, we understand, with coordination. And maybe it is because there are two bodies that feel ownership of that space and they're not playing nice, they're not coordinating. There needs to be coordination and it there needs to be with one body. Between the two departments. It needs to be with one body and now it will be with one body and they will be open to all of the senior programming that has been there. So that's, that's the whole idea, that's what we've been talking about. I think the ASA leadership is on board with that, they understand and are willing to coordinate with the Council of Aging. I, don't, I, I hope that it is smooth sailing and it's not going to be as tense as it has been in the past. Well, I think before we start moving our furniture around, we should consult the selectmen of town. Okay, so moving That's along the, to the next agenda item. You can go on with your business. I thank you. You're welcome to stay. The next agenda item is the Central School also is to discuss the design scope. Um, Christine Bongiorno, Bongiorno, the Director of Health and Human Services, would you like to come up and, sure. I, and talk to them? I'm sorry, we're I understand you have a hearing at 7.30, so we do. Yeah. Um, so, 
Susan and I, Susan Carp, the Council on Aging Director, and I have been to a number of Council on Aging buildings, um, senior centers across the region. Um, and over the past few years, we really noticed that there are some upgrades in the Arlington Senior Center that need to happen. Um, we understand that the town is in, you know, obviously not, not able um, at all times to, to invest a lot of funding uh, in the Senior Center. And, and you know, there are a number of other building projects in town that the, the town is, is working on. Um, so with that, we have um, put in for a capital request for funds to hire an architect. Um, we received some funding this fiscal year through the capital budget, and we're um, putting in a request to increase that, to hire an architect to really look at the building, look at the population, try to come up with a plan that will bring the center to the 21st century. Um, with that plan, we'll know how much funding we will need. Um, we've met with state legislators. Um, we're committed to doing um, a capital fundraising campaign and writing grants um, in addition to requesting funds from the town to make this happen. Um, you know, I've talked to Carol. There are some, some really neat ideas. We've had initial meetings with various people that, that are in this field, and um, there are some really um, innovative and uh, interesting opportunities, I think, that could present themselves for this space, um, both to improve to, to increase and improve services to seniors, as well as, I understand, night, night and weekend use um, to, to increase uh, financial capacity for the ARB as well. Um, so we're a few years out, I think, uh, in, in actually having a design plan and understanding the, the amount of funding needed. But we are starting those conversations with funders, and um, this, is, this is what we do. We, we look for money, and um, it's, it's something that I think um, the building hasn't been upgraded uh, substantially in a number of years. I think we're looking almost 30 years, and I think it's really time that we invest um, to improve and increase capacity. Um, and then in addition, uh, a small capital request was put in, um, and Carol and I spoke before the request was put into the capital, finance, uh, capital budget. Um, but basically what we were looking to do is um, to improve the front lobby. So when you walk into the center, um, the circle, um, I understand that there will be some upgrades to the, to the, to the brick circle. Um, but when you walk into that lobby, um, we put some fun funding, we put in a funding request to essentially upgrade that space and add a, a, a restroom off that space. Because right now when you walk in, there are a lot of people that are looking for a facility and they don't know where it is. And it's really, it's behind closed doors. So if we had a, an accessible space there for a restroom, um, it's just really the first step in trying to improve the space. So that request went in, and hopefully we get funded for next year to start that. Um, so those are the, the, the quick updates um, that I have. Nothing, nothing solid yet, but two years out. And obviously, as we receive funding, I'll be um, coming back to you for, um, for help. <laughs> but this is your building, so I understand. That, um, it sounds like a move in the right direction. It is. 30 years is a long time. Mm -hmm. And a space study is a good yes, absolutely. first step. What do you think, Andy? Absolutely. <laughs> do you have any idea yet for the board what the overall scope of budget would be, ideally, for the assessment for the architect? For just the architect? Or just the architect, um, just the design work. I think we were looking for about $80,000. Um, I really uh, didn't want to limit our, ourselves, because I really I think we can. Um, Think about a design where we knock all the walls down and start over, um, possibly even adding on to the space. Um, that's also been brought up. So I think um, we really want to think outside the box and what is our, our, our best option and, and not be limited with um, funds for the architect. Because I think that's really, really where we can be creative um, in making this a great, great space. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thanks. Any questions from the board? No. no. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. So our next order of business is um, now moving on to the continued hearing for an environmental design review for 1098 Massachusetts Avenue, Caragian Realty Trust. Um, I don't see the applicant in the room. Uh, he's right. He does not yeah, He probably can't fit in the room. So anybody that isn't here for the and environmental design reviews, we have two coming up now for 1098 Mass Ave. 
um, you're welcome to stay, but thank you. Thank you. Are you going to go to Central School again? Um, we have the Central School on the agenda later after these two design reviews, which is going to take at least an hour. Um, I would but only imagine. from a technical yeah. standpoint. But only from a technical standpoint because we're going to discuss who's going to be on, who's going to be working with Carol on the RFPs possibly, and things like that. So nothing else really of public interest. In case we all have to leave. No, we don't have to. We don't have to, but they don't have to broach anything about it here. Thank you for your attention. Who's here? Okay, I'd like to invite Mr. Sarandula. Up, you're up. Great, <laughs> aren't Mm -hmm. Rob Sarandolo from Carragina Real Estate. We just reopened your hearing. You were out in the hallway, so you probably didn't hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we were trying to be cognizant of all the people in here and just yes, let thank you. Say. Thank you. If you could introduce yourself also. Cliff Rober with Rober Survey. I, I created the plan. I hope you all got a copy, or did they not get any copy? Uh, we have not I got yet. them today. I, I yes. Okay. Two copies. I, 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 I have to keep one for the Okay. I have one here and I can lay it out on the desk also. Uh, yeah, I think we're probably going to have to have you walk us through it since we haven't seen anything yet. We don't, have, right. the, we don't have the benefit of having reviewed it and okay, have well, comments ready for you. Um, I, I don't think there's going to be a, a whole lot. The, the, the task I was uh, asked to perform is actually determining the, the parking that is currently on the property and how it is laid out. And, and basically that's what I've shown here. We did a survey, we located the building, we located the, uh, the, the berm and the curb cuts um, and the, the tent area. And then we've laid out the parking that they're currently using and as they've had uh, prior plans that have come before uh, town boards. So I've laid it out. Also, besides having the, the parking outside, the current garage has four lifts that they are currently using. So that's actually four spaces that are on the property that are being used at any time during the day. So including the four spaces, we've got a total of 15 spaces on the property. Uh, I have designated one of them as a compact space, um, which is the parking space number two, which is uh, the second one in off of Quincy. And the reason I did that is because if I, if I had that as a regular space, and there are three cars that park there, the parking space three really is, is not that great a space because you're starting to back up into other spaces and that's not a good idea. So that is why I actually have a uh, compact space in that location. Um, I've tried to do as, uh, as little changing of the prom, current configuration as possible. I know that there's a concern and all with the dumpster in the shed, which I've talked to Rob and he is looking to, shall we say, revitalize and beautify that area. Just, just to uh, interject briefly, uh, we've looked at <coughs> every conceivable place to put that dumpster and even dealing with the dumpster company there's a truck that comes in regularly and needs uh, convenient access so any other location of that dumpster is going to be near impossible or impossible to get to number one by the truck and number two it starts encroaching closer to the neighbors so uh, this dumpster position it's where it's been forever over 37 and a half years um, and I don't see that it can be moved anywhere, unfortunately. I thought at one time we might be able to, but it's, it's impossible. So I would like to make it clear. It's not so bad today, but I would like it to blend a little bit better. So I just wanted to jump in with that. Um, I, I did want to bring up also, besides what we have is parking on the site, there are currently adjacent to our site on the street there are six spaces on the on the street now. I, everybody can use them. I mean, Jimmy's regularly uses them in the gas station, but there are six adjacent spaces that are street spaces. We have also, besides doing what, uh, the 
the parking areas and the layout on our site over here, we have proposed six motorcycle spaces on the property uh, along the alley going down. So if you've seen the property, um, it's, it's along the left side of the building going down, having six motorcycle spaces. So that can be the customer parking. They can come in there. That will hopefully alleviate some of the congestion on Mass Ave in front of the uh, store. We've never offered that before to our clients ever. And in meeting with the board last week, I thought it would help. It's, it's some burden and uh, help that, that our clients could just pull right in and those would be free for them uh, at all times. In addition, one thing I'd like to just bring up is spot number, what number do 11. we have there? Spot number 11. Mm -hmm. uh, making that a real spot would mean a little alterization to the, uh, to the current plans. Way back when, it was a bike path or a bike pad that was asked by the town to put in. Oh, that's where the bike that's path is? That's a bike is? pad. It's, it can be used for a very small car or right now a couple of motorcycles will generally park there. Uh, to make it a legitimate, real, full spot, we would have to alter that bike pad. I could have it be a very small, tiny little bike pad, and a, uh, we could cut in and make a larger spot for a car and add <laughs> a, a real full-size car spot. And where were you looking to put the new bike rack? Uh, the, it disappeared. We, we, we haven't had a rack there in a long, long time. Um, and But the pad, I could put it somewhere. If, if the town really wants one there, I could reinstall it. I could reinstall it up on the near the front entrance. This is a, uh, a raised pad area, that L shape going right around the building. I could squeeze it right now to the end of the bike pad where it is currently. Maybe that's a quick solution. Or we could put it up near the door if need be. The reason, I'm not quite sure why we had the pad there, but the, we had a bicycle shop back in the 80s. Uh, when I, I forget his last name, McLennan, I believe, was one of the board members, a bicyclist. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a bicycle store upstairs. And I'm not quite sure if the bike pad, bike rack was something that the town wanted or... Typically it is something that the town requires. Oh, I see. Uh, so if it's... Uh, for some, bike parking, so, along with vehicle parking. Very good. So we'd be happy to put one in wherever the town would want. Okay, so the, the last time we met there were a lot of concerns that were raised. Um, I was hoping to see a few more of them addressed. Uh, you've addressed some of them. Why? The, the bike rack was one. The parking was another. Um, we wanted to hear from, I think, uh, Mike Byrne. I don't know if we did get back from any message back from Mike on how the parking was determined. The he responded parking. saying that he calculated the, um, it's per square foot, the parking demand is by per square foot in the um, zoning requirements. And he said he did consider the um, existing uses in arriving at this number. He apologized that he was not able to give you any more detailed response today with that follow-up question. He had meetings this afternoon, but he said that when he calculated this, he did consider the square footage of the existing uses. So the uses. 13 spaces which he recommended included the karate school, the Arlington Tire, yes. and the Boston Motorsports. Yes. Okay, and this plan right now you're showing that you can provide 10 spaces well, I'm and actually, 6 motorcycle spaces. Actually, there would be 11 spaces outside the building, 4 spaces inside the building. For a customer use? Well, the yeah. customers come in, they park, and then when the vehicles are being serviced, they are used inside the, the, uh, the garage. So they are for customers because the customers, are, are customers' cars are going in there. So when a customer parks their car to have service, it doesn't stay there all day and get serviced on the outside. It actually is brought into the garage. Mm. So that's why those spots are actually usable spots in, in, the, in the course of the normal day of operation. So that's why I'm saying there are 11 spots on the outside, four on the inside, and then there's the inclusion of the six motorcycle spots. Okay. It's an ingenious idea, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's a, uh, I, I it's, think it's a it, valid one. It's, 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 and it's been that way for 37. It's never, this has always been what we've, I guess, fortunately, 
or unfortunately have had to do to operate on that block. It's it's always been that way, and uh, we're trying our best to accommodate. Now, are, are if you, I could, uh, could mention, ahead. I mean, there is a possibility of putting another spot on here, which I talked to Rob, but really I'd rather not put a spot in here because at that point mm -hmm. it would take out the access off of, Mass, uh, off of Quincy Street. Yeah, because your curb cut. Correct. Is, curb we cut. Have, is, we have two on that side. One a little further up and then that one. If we did block it, not only would we create a spot outside the curb cut, but we would create one more spot inside the, the parking lot. However, I don't mm -hmm. think the flow works as well, mm -hmm. if that's the case, coming off of the higher end on Quincy Street. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware that the board has ever recognized uh, spots inside the garage as counting towards the public, uh, the parking requirement. If there, if I'm wrong on that, well, I'd be glad I to would be... I would interject that anytime you now, if you correlate a little with residential, with the fact that you have spots inside a garage count because you can park inside or outside, and I think the same thing applies here, where if you're if you have a car on the outside, mm -hmm. and you're going to be working on the car, I, I know Arlington does not want them to work on the car on the on outside of the, pro, the, the building, Correct. so that car has to move to the inside. The only issue I see with that is there is a person now without a car, so there's somebody bringing that person and picking them up, dropping them off well, to get not, their car. It's not a also parking needs spot. It's a workspace. Right. So it, it's, it's, it's not so actually it's a lift. A, There's, well, your average driver, driver but, isn't going to drive a car into a lift. No, it's something for but your, the fact is, work there the, during the day, there's almost always going to be a car in each one of these. But and it's a workspace. It's not a parking space. It, it is during. It is a workspace. I understand but what you're saying. But that's saying a workspace for the cars to be repaired. That it shouldn't count for the parking tour. And when the owner of that car comes back to pick up their car, he's coming in a vehicle, most likely. Um, Another I would, vehicle. I would say that there's site. a good chance that they're coming by bus, because a lot of people are well, traveling. At, Regardless. That's a, a bit speculative. But we, we can okay, go into so that. I'm going to open this up to my colleagues to kind of go around sure. and see what other. Um, Concerns they have that have or have not been addressed um, by the plan is it? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, I'm uh, commend you on the motorcycle parking in the uh, what I call the apron area between the two buildings. I think that's a positive step, and I think it does help with the overall parking scheme here at, at the site. Um, I do have some other concerns that aren't directly related to the plan. Um, and I went through the history of our, of our special permits. Um, one of the things that caught my eye was, and uh, Mr. Rover commented on this, that uh, the repair of vehicles is not supposed to be happening outside. And um, my understanding is that has happened quite frequently at this site, um, and particularly in areas where the tent is. And I think that we um, I, I'd have to say not frequently. There were times when apparently some of our uh, mechanics may have been testing and starting, but there's never been any repair or maintenance done outside the building. I think well, we I, heard maybe comments about I misheard that. Actually. Air guns and different things like that. We've heard comments about that from the neighbors yeah. at the last hearing. Yes. And Which going is repairs, I think. And, uh, so uh, we've never repaired. There may have been air guns that they've heard in the garage, but there's, mm -hmm. the air guns can't reach outside, number one. Those hoses can't get outside, and there's never any repairs done outside. The okay. air guns, they definitely probably heard in starting a motorcycle, no question. Yeah. And we've addressed that, but they cannot repair outside so often. Okay, Bruce. So, in any event, I was leading into the whole issue about the tent mm -hmm. and um, the buffer that seems to have vanished. Um, back in the original permit, special permit from uh, 1982, mm. uh, that was uh, item six under the findings of fact, uh, and the board finds a seven and a half foot buffer area will be constructed and maintained along the residential property lines to the rear, um, and then uh, any accessory repair operations shall be sufficiently sound insulated to protect the neighborhood 
from inappropriate noise and flashing fumes, gases, smoke, and vapor shall be effectively confined to the premises. I want to make sure that happens. And whatever decision the board makes, it's going to incorporate all the conditions that have been in the previous special mm -hmm. permit. Uh, it'll be too lengthy a motion, if we get to a motion, to read all those into the motion. But I just thought I would remind you of what I think are yes. some of the more significant aspects of the previous special permits, because we're going to expect that those continue to be yes. part of, of the planning going forward. There was also supposed to be a six-foot high uh, screen of planters and plant materials located on the site. Uh, with a cedar fence six feet in height uh, bordering the residential areas. And I don't think that that exists now. Um, it should. I think there's I a think six there's foot a fence there, there, but it's been old. Oh, there's, there's a fence. fence. There's no, a, there's not anymore. Six there's foot high fence. fence. Okay, so I it's really the plan. This way, it's the yeah. seven and a half foot width, is that what you read? For height? Uh, the set, the buffer is seven and a half feet in width. In width. And then the height of the screening has to be six feet tall. Um, and we heard from a number of uh, members of the public that uh, tires and other debris are visible from their residential properties from this side of your plan looking mm -hmm. into the lot. So that has to be effectively screened so it's not uh, visible to the public to the, from those residential areas. Bear with me for just a second. While, while Bruce is looking for that, do we have a dimension on what the buffer yards are on this plan? I, I do not have it here. I mean, uh, we have a 10 scale. Do you have a scale with you to tell us what the, uh, I, I, for I instance, didn't, what the I fence can, is set at? I can get it very close approximation. But okay. Because, uh, Well, it's greater than five feet uh, on the back and the on the back and the um, west side. Although I do notice that it, it is would be under five feet, and I'm using five because I don't have a scale to get it exact. It is under five on the east side, where you can see it comes closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's and the under back five. appears to be under no, the back, slightly under ten. It's under ten. Um, it, it's possibly close to the seven and a half, but I do not have the scale to give you the dimension. Okay. Well, and uh, this is now the 1994 special permit. Um, and at that point, uh, the parking of the display motorcycles particularly caught the attention of the board. Mm -hmm. and. My understanding, and this would be a big sea change from what's going on on the ground, I realize what I'm asking here, but my understanding is that display motorcycles cannot be parked in this area. So that's at all? At all. That was a condition of your special permit in 19... That would, that would 19 put us out of business, right? In 1994. Would, well, right my understanding there. is when you bought the property that adjoins this, which was the former dry cleaning establishment, Part of the idea of buying that was to find additional display space for, mm -hmm. for the motorcycles. So I think, to your credit, you've been good about trying to find additional space to accommodate this, but the problem you're trying to alleviate seems to continue to manifest itself. Um, so it's been a condition since the original special permit. And I think we're here uh, today with Mike's assistance and the board to change that, have it be the 11 to 13 spots, even creatively making these inside mm -hmm. spots, so that we can operate as a single motorcycle dealership. That yard, as we call it, which would be a, a display yard, really, is is crucial uh, to the, us being alive. Uh, yes, we found some extra space over the years with the Arlington, uh, the Almont Cleaners building. And yes, in the future, and I don't think we should discuss it today, would be some more internal space coming in the future, which is mm -hmm. not for today. This this yard is called a, it's a, we call it a yard. Uh, there is no other way for us to operate. We, uh, it's, it's just crucial to, to, the, to the business. It's, it's, it's standard in every motorcycle shop in the world, 
including this one. Thank you for everyone allowing us this little privilege of this yard. We're here today to say we're a single operating dealership. We no longer have all these tenants based on the square footage Michael came up with. We, we heard all that before. So this is a... It's just, uh, I'm it's just pointing just, it out. It's been part of every special permit for the property going back to 1982. So and it doesn't seem to have been complied with. So it's, that's a, it's impossible. It's it's impossible. I, I guess I'm here with hat in hand to mm -hmm. uh, throw the mercy of myself on the, on the court to allow this to operate like a small economical motorcycle shop that's growing because of the need in this area for this particular product. All right. I understand your desire to keep the status quo. What about the tent? Uh, the tent, I did a little bit of investigation on that. Uh, yeah. Kurt Frisch, back in the 70s when we purchased the land, uh, back in the day, there was a tent, there was a structure back there. It was in 1975, 76. It was always there. It was there from uh, actually back in the 69 to 76. And we had one up for a while when we first operated in the 78, 79, 80. There was always a structure back there. Uh, due to either I think the question is about the the removal of the tent, as was discussed at the last complete, hearing. I think uh, the complete removal, if, right. if it's absolutely, if that's absolutely necessary, I guess. Uh, uh, gosh, I would prefer to apply to have one that the, the city and the town would be happy with uh, back uh, there, and, and eventually remove it once we have some more space inside. To, to Are we talking though that theoretically this tent was it's permitted? It's I thought, not permitted. I thought that's where the seven and a half foot buffer was to the tent. No, no. So no. It, it was for the entire property. property line. I believe this was the um, that may be the plan yes. that corresponds. So, so originally in that space there was supposed to be parking. Well, and and I would I would say that that's an unreasonable plan that should not have come up because there's no way a car can pull in and park the way so, they have the cars. So the, the fact is, though, is, is we can say what's reasonable, what's not reasonable, everything right. else, but this is the special permit. Well, this is what was This approved. is the legal plan. Right. So yeah. the thing that you have to uh, it, yeah, act under yes. is that special permit. Um, I'm sorry. And it's what we're also bound so, by. So, 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 from, so from, from my perspective, if, if I can, um, so from my perspective, I think the things that I must have been, I'm disappointed in, let me put it that way, okay, after our last discussion, yeah. is what you've come back with is new paint. And so where there are, because I'm looking at the old plan now that was provided on the last meeting, is we've got two spaces here, which you show us two spaces here, but now you're telling me that you don't even have that space. That's not really a space, that you really only have one space. We'd like to make it a little so, bigger. So when you were showing 10 earlier, you really only had nine, okay? So if you if you look at that, right? Um, because this is, this is the plan that you provided us before. We added one here. Yep, so now I'm looking up here, and so you've added one in here. That okay, so that takes away that one. So you're still at ten. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so, and then with respect to over here, what I'm hearing is is that there hasn't been any change in inventory that you uh, plan on displaying or anything else. At least I didn't hear you say that to make room for the six. Because I'm looking at a picture here where I'm not sure how you fit six spaces there. So, so, so my question is, is I, I see new paint right here and right over here, mm -hmm. but I, I don't hear a change in how this, the, the building is going to be used or the parking or any of the other concerns that we had with respect to the tent, what, the way that behavior is gonna change. All I hear is some new paint and that we're just gonna reconfigure everything that we already have. I, I guess that's why I'm disappointed. I guess I was thinking that, you know, you were asking for us to talk about an unpermitted tent and to try to figure out how to keep that. You wanted us to, you know, go down below the 13. You know, that's asking a lot when you're talking about a special permit that's been around, that's been around for 34 years 
and has all those requirements. So I guess what I was hoping to hear, frankly, was, you know what, we understand, we've got a lot of inventory, you know, we're going to keep our inventory, but we're going to put the inventory here, we're going to do this, we're going to do that to change our behavior and change how we're going to do business. And frankly, I just haven't heard it. Well, let me jump in and give you the two of yeah. the changes that we are absolutely going to, going to do. Number one, upon your request, we are going to eliminate this much of our inventory, create these customer sparkings. I'm also willing, if it pleases the board and everyone, to even eliminate this side. I was even going to, at some point in the future, kind of on, sure. to put a security fence here. That way, this whole front is clean, it's available to our clients between you, me, and the neighbors. If I had to sneak a couple of car spots in here, I could. It's very, I don't, it, it just doesn't make sense in a motorcycle store, but uh, if it pleases the board, we could. That's number one. Number two, I guess I will talk about the only solution I have for this whole tent and inventory thing is when we do eventually move into the Arlington Tire Building. It is my only, it's my only hope of reducing some of the, the cluster at some level, but I still absolutely need spots out here. So, so let me ask, what's under the tent? It's a couple of hundred of service customers we get every single week. It's half of this is uh, storage uh, that people have uh, utilized for, for our eBay activity, and they, that comes and goes, so we, that's where we stockpile everything before we ship. And the other half is our regular daily, weekly, and monthly service that comes in. Inside of our shop, just like in Arlington Tire, we're working on four. Inside here we have probably 16 motorcycles at any given time. And on the other side, we have three lifts and we have motorcycles we're working on. We're, we're, we're servicing not only Boston, which is 1.2 million people, but all of the western suburbs. All So we've, we, we're so we're at capacity, and uh, so at nighttime, what are you doing with all the, the because the, the service has increased so d dramatically since the fall five years ago with the economic fall, and 18 percent of the motorcycle dealerships just going out of business. And we, by the way, came very close. Sorry, I, did, I made it. <laughs> I stayed alive. I um, now we've expanded our business some 30 percent. My profits haven't gone up, but our business has. We have a lot more overhead. So. What was the question again? Though? So when you have all of these things out here okay, on display, so I don't the think question. they're there at night, are these they? Are, yeah. Oh, they I'll are. tell you, the last okay. few, this last year in particular, it's been so, I, I guess I'm going to use the word difficult, uh, to, to deal with the uh, uh, amount of people coming in that I've had to leave these out, and they're in the secure area, right? They're outside, just like you would on a, on a used car lot. And then where are your trucks with... Those are, and those come in, and those help to secure the area at night. We just buttoned it up a little while ago before we closed up at some Okay, so the tent is actually being used for consignment? It's Half of this is like what I'm going to call storage and waiting to be eBayed and, and sent off, and the other half rotates. But not by you? By us. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. all us. Okay, that's yeah, all The you. internet has caused this whole other thing for us. We're having to manage a, a cyber... Uh, stores and people from all over, you know, it's just a whole other aspect of what we're doing. You know, every site has a capacity. Yeah. And there are zoning regulations, there's permitting regulations, you can't just willy-nilly yeah. add whatever you want at any time and expand your facility beyond capacity And, and I can't even agree with you more, so let me... And that's what you've done. We have by systematically attrition. over the years. Not uh, on purpose. <laughs> yes, on purpose. No, no, it's, I'm going You've been with violating the, these permits every year. So, on purpose. It's not intentional. I'm dealing with the, the I'm, it's like water been, seeking its own level. I'm dealing you've with. You've been cited, you've almost been closed down in the past. Oh, we don't have Almost your special permits have almost been revoked at times completely to put you out of business. Because be of your use of this site and exceeding its capacity, it's too dense. It, you know, something's got to give. So maybe maybe you need a satellite site by now. Your business is growing. You're expanding. You're servicing the entire state. Almost it sounds like maybe you need a satellite site for we actually, storage. Let me give you our our solution. Number one, if it pleases the board and the neighbors, I'll 
remove everything under that tent <coughs> and put it in a satellite site. I will eventually be taking over the Arlington entire store so that we would have a little bit more breathing space. Same as I had some breathing space at the Alma Cleaner site, which we did, by the way, for a while until uh, business grew. Um, I'd be perfectly fine with that and, and really clean it up. Create some nice spots here, all right? Create a nice beautified area so our motorcycle clients and a couple of car clients, I, I guess we would, you know, make a couple of spots here. It's killing me. Only because of not me, by well, the way. Just to, I think that actually creates more of a dangerous situation. I yeah, oh, I, 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 right, I would right. advise the board against advocating yeah, for that. Not legal yeah. spots. Well, well let me at least eliminate some of the congestion. I'll eliminate the tent. We'll remove all those motorcycles. I need to put them out in and out during the day. I'll have them all wonderfully, beautifully aligned, like any other service center. I, th really creates I think space. what Rob's saying is uh, the the consignment bikes potentially going off site, but the bikes that are being serviced every day on, on a daily basis, day. they can't go to an off site site because you're not going to be driving the bikes to an off site site for the you know, for his customers to pick up. I, th I think that's I, I think the consignment area. I think Rob would totally agree with it. And, I, I think the other bikes, it's potentially half this area, which would then create a lot more room with the half of consignment bikes being gone. I think that opens up the area tremendously. I'm not sure if that's what you're looking at, but I, again, customer service on the bikes can't be at an off-site location. But I think he can still deal with being having a, a buffer around there and and that allowing him to put the customer service bikes beyond the buffer as as was indicated on in his original special permit on the original special permit plan that you looked at Bruce was there a plan attached to it that showed where outdoor storage of motorcycle was to go or where indoor storage of motorcycle was to go I don't think there was any outdoor storage of motorcycles on the original. Plan. So where were you to, by your by your original permitted plan, where were you to store your motorcycles, your serviceable motorcycles, I'd the ones to, that you're now putting out on eBay? Where were they supposed to be? I would have to check to see, but I don't know if we had a plan. If, if outdoor out. storage sure. and display was not permitted, yes. then they must have been inside somewhere. If, if I could say there was probably not eBay back back in eighty something, so there was not the the refrigeration. But okay, I let's think we're talking about getting rid of those out of the site, uh, but trying to maintain the customer the customers' bicycle bikes not being storage, but being where the customers' bikes are placed while they come in and then going back out with the customer. So if, if I can just kind of wrap up what I was talking about. So so that, that was my disappointment. And I'm less disappointed now that we've just talked about it like that. So so for me, you know, <laughs> I think, you know, at some point you take a victory and go, but um, this notion of coordinating that off there m makes sense to me because I don't want there to be all of a sudden some creep, some inventory creep, essentially. I think the removal of the tent is in an offsite on the and, eBay things. And, makes and a lot of storage sense. bikes so that I'll push it all in at the end of the night, as it should be by the way. So and on the on the parking spaces, it probably does make sense to get rid of that concrete pad to open up at least one more space because, yeah. frankly, I don't think you can fit a third space we, there. We use so. them just to speak freely. This, this, th there's a car here every day, but they come in and out of the shop. This space for one here. Okay. We were requesting that we have a legitimate one there. Uh, that way, we'd have it actually painted. Is there marked. space for one there? If you've got a dumpster there and you need regular access and, and to the you dumpster, know, and he can come and we we have keys to every one of these cars that's never just parked there like that. This can be quickly and easily moved. It wouldn't interfere Those with aren't the dumpster. Necessarily supposed to be employee spaces. Well, and they 
Well, they, they could be, if that helps us uh, solve well, it. I'm just saying the dumpster is actually here, which is yeah. very little amount of the We can get at it easily. Whereas this is the shed. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they're trying to come into the and, shed. And it's, it's, and it's not a make-believe spot. It's a real spot, spot that here, gets used every day. If you're back of the spot, you're going to have difficulty getting a dumpster. So <laughs> the, other thing, the other thing that I just wanted to, and then I'll, I'll give over to Andrew, um, but I, I guess the other thing that I heard a lot from the neighbors, and I guess the other thing that would help me is to say that there's some type of, you know, either placard or something you talk about the fact that you do business in a neighborhood. Absolutely. Uh, we do, actually, we, with respect to, but in twofold. Number one is certainly employees. There should be training about that, right? And yeah. testing bikes and all that kind of stuff. It just it's it's not right. I mean, you guys, absolutely you, is not. you have to do right by your neighbors. Okay. And then the other thing is, is I, I think it makes sense to even have a nice sign with respect to your customers you and bet. making sure that I they agree. understand, you know, you're doing business in a neighborhood. So, so for me, you know, removing the tent, you know, not using this in such a dense way, moving yeah. some of that off site, changing this, making motorcycle spaces there, yeah. uh, you know, Removing that pad, opening that up, and you know some training, some a commitment to training on employees and that type of thing, you know, as well as uh, placards for customers, that would go a long way from my perspective. Just the training on person. employees was done that evening. My general manager made a list. We we made a hundred flyers. We did um, a payroll stuffer two weeks ago. We put it into the payroll. We we've, we've mm -hmm. taken action. I have no problem and would like to do the signs on the back and the sides, and our clients, many of them, uh, who some of them are the culprits, I think, of some of the noise, by the way, are not only our staff, a handful, uh, but the majority could be even our clients. We're going to do regular reminders on the RO itself with the computer system. We can put uh, reminders plus signs, and we are in a residential neighborhood. As I said in the letter to Carol, I'm, I personally, and we as a business, a family business, have been in the neighborhood since 1976. We've been here as well, and I want to be a good neighbor. I do not want to be a bad neighbor. And I'm in a Mass Ave business, yep. and I want to comply and with, with everyone and do the best I can. I truly do, and it's not just words. I'll, Couple that with action. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, because we we yeah. want your business. I mean, it's the business for the town, I, everything else. So so don't look at it like you know I'm not, we're just trying to. But but it needs to be on the scale that the property allows, from my perspective. So and I can um, I can make adjustments. I didn't know tonight, to be quite honest, not doing this. You know, this is the twelfth time I've sat in front of a board in twelve years. So it's not like I do this all the time. Um, so I'm not 100% familiar, but I thought tonight was the bulk of it was to show you the layout of this parking. I'm 110% and we can submit to the board immediately the plan of, when I did the motorcycle parking, that's obviously a shift. I wasn't planning on this, but I can. I have no problem with that if it pleases the board and the neighbors. I'd love to put a nice security fence here would add to the corralling and the beautification of the front. I didn't plan on doing it tonight, but just to please the board and to comply at some level, I will. In, I can do it within a month. I, I hope uh, to get that out of there quickly. I, I only need a couple of weeks to a month to disassemble the tent and remove that inventory. What's today? It's the mid, middle of September, so I'd say uh, you know 30 days. Uh, I can have that all out of there. Um, Computify the dumpster area, which would help aesthetically at some point. I'd say maybe by year's end uh, to get that beautified. It's and in, in to end and conclude that the board would uh, be uh, uh, to really look at that spot we created, which I believe is real, and making that a legitimate spot, and putting the bike rack wherever uh, the board would like. To have it put, it could stay on the smaller pad that's still existing. That's right near the sidewalk, which is convenient. I think there may be enough left to put a pad. I'm sorry, bike rack there. If not, maybe right up near the door. Could be over here. 
know, it could be. Extended. Actually, you know, it's not a bad idea. We we create one more and just put it right up. That's there. not a bad idea. Or if I don't know how many people on would the other use side. it. Actually, yeah, yeah, go on the other, other side. Place would be yeah, go on the other there. side, right over there. Yeah, but that's anyway. a better place. This yeah. is this is another area where you could put it. So wherever. Yeah, I think it's kind of dense. Um, yeah, I I actually don't think that's a good area to put a bike. No, not way over there. That's a little. I mean, I don't think it's. I don't mind it going in. I don't know if it does. This area right here? <coughs> it's, it's like, it's, it's a curve. sort of like a part of the room. curb yeah. cut. It's just a wide expanse. Oh, oh the curb right cut is all the way back well, to the planter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so so how, how, how is this car even frame. able to be here? Like there. Well, because, right in the middle of the curb cut. Well, because yeah, the car has come it's up and around, and, and the car is actually, this is a space or an area, but the car is actually not eight and a half feet wide. Cars are or 18, six, feet long. or 18 feet long. Most cars are in the 15 foot range in, and six and a half. In the drawing, it looks so, like it sticks out. In reality, there's, there's more than enough room there. There's always three cars there, and it's plenty. Of room. I'm, I'm all done, Kristen. Thanks. Andrew. Yeah, I, I've driven by a bunch in the last two weeks. I've noticed some of the improvements we talked about have been made. I noticed I'm just looking at the picture Mike has here that the plow is gone. It was gone a couple of days after, so we appreciate that. My cousin Nikki sold the plow, thank goodness. I was, uh, <laughs> I was uh, sending a tow <laughs> truck. Um, it to do it was going to either be a tow truck showing up, or he sold it apparently. Yeah. We moved it to the back of the lot, and then it left. So the, the bikes on the street seems to have decreased. And it's obviously customers that are parking thank there, you. which is supposed it, to be done. So that, that's good. Um, I'm going to echo the other board members here. I, I know you've already agreed to it, but that, that tent's got to go. And I think the buffer zones that we want here really need to be cleaned up, taken care of. I know one of the complaints that we I had from the it. residents last time was that there were tires, and I, can, uh, I don't know if, it, if there's trash there, but we can we assume a, that it's, it's we parts of tires, tires and batteries. And that just has to go someplace And it's else. going to be eliminated, so we'll, we'll, we'll eliminate that. Yeah. Um, is it okay with, if we uh, create an area that's covered so that you can't see it, so it goes just to stack up? Uh, I'd like to eliminate them every month, but there'll be at times in peak season we're literally doing hundreds of them, and it's, it's mm. just, it's just, it, we could fill this room in a week, is how fast it is. But uh, but we get them out of there very regularly, but I'd like to maybe camouflage it Where's somehow that's legitimate. I think they're stored over here in the buffer zones, right outside and around the tent. From what we heard last time, I don't know what the solution there is. Because they like batteries and tires. Those people, the disposal people, like the oil disposal dumpsters and traps, those people come and access it as yeah. well. Yeah, so they access it through here? Yeah, actually, they probably come either way. Actually, you know what? They do come right who, who in. Comes through through? The it's the tire and the battery people who, who, who dispose of those legitimately. We have the company who uh, disposes our uh, tires and the batteries. It's a company that comes and picks them up. Sometimes we pay them, sometimes they pay us. It all depends. It's like scrap metal. Sometimes uh, it's there's money to be made, other times you have to pay. Same thing with tires and batteries. I just wonder if there's a way to store it in this area somewhere. I know the space is tight. I know we space got space is tight everywhere. Yeah. We got one complaint that I know of and we addressed it immediately. I know one of the neighbors saw that it was really getting out of hand and it was. Yeah. We How often do they come and pick up? In season, they're coming. I'm going to say twice a month in season, but now that it's slower, it's it's it, they'll come as needed. You know, every other month because we're just it starts. Yeah, yeah. but okay. maybe, maybe the regular. I mean, as needed, needed maybe to happen more. I mean, they, that's where we stock them and store them forever. I know some of the. I don't know what how the process goes with the neighbors, but if it's if it's really bad, I want to make it. Yeah, much better. Well, I don't. I don't think it's allowed. Once again, it, it's, it's not it's allowed. allowed. <laughs> it's safety hazard. Yeah, it just so it's, oh, it's an environmental it's not hazard. hazard. It's not a matter of you know the neighbors having a problem with it. Oh. It's not allowed. You can't keep trash just out in the open, and that is well, it, and it is. It's um, always it's being disposed. I want to ask you a question. They, they, they recycle it. It's recycled. As a possibility, we're going to have a seven and a half foot buffer. Mm -hmm. Can we have a screened in? Um, area fenced in screened in area over in this area for that purpose won't be a structure but it'll because it'll be fencing but screen fencing and that we are we're going to need the buffer anyway but also put something in there so at least it um, 
uh, keeps it uh, keeps from it being spreading. seen and spreading from, from the neighbors. Yeah, some sort of contained area. Is the grade the same on the other side of the fence in the neighboring properties, or is it lower, higher? Uh, certainly not lower. Um, is there, they maintain fences, or is that your fence on the, on the wall? What kind of fence do you have there? <coughs> here. Okay. You know, I'd have yeah. to ask. Is that I think it's a six-foot wood. I think that's mine, actually. Is it? It depends on where we're talking about. I'm sitting back here yeah. right now. But if Are you the Riley? I am, uh, no, I'm 10 Quincy Street, so I'm not sure where we're... I'm Hibbert? That's me. Okay, Hibbert. Okay, 10 Quincy, 10. So there's the Riley Family Family Trust. Hibbert and Yank. But there is a fence. It appears that it's on the Quincy Street, uh, the Hibbert Street property. Okay. So it does not look like it's... Uh, Greater Boston Motor Sports. So fence. you're not maintaining the six foot height well, fence. Well, it's a, there's a fence there. Mm -hmm. That it, it, I think if there's a fence there, it would be uh, counterproductive to have two fences together. There is a, a fence that basically rings around from the existing garage all the way around to the uh, whose garage is this? That is the Hibbert's. Lot uh, six. James you're, Hibbert's that's right. Yeah, okay. That's okay. That is not our garage. Um, but there's a decent section of land that is on their side of the fence that is actually part of this property. Uh, you can see it. There's, it's a number of feet. Um, that being said, I mean, oh, oh, I see. Yeah, right. uh, the, the possibility, the seven and a half foot buffer, I mean, I would say that would be from the, from the property line. Uh, but again, the fence goes all the way around. And I would say having the seven and a half foot buffer and putting something in here so he can get those those tires and whatever out of sight and not being not being visible, not falling over or anything else like that. I think that's it, it's okay. similar to what has been provided in the tire company with the shed. It'd be a similar situation. That that I think would hopefully help the neighbors not having that eyesore. It would help Rob being able to have a self-contained place to put them. This is and a covered structure you're talking about. Um, yeah, it's just a fence. No, it's just a fence. Yeah. I was talking about a, like a fencing mm -hmm. with some screening on these on the uh, sides of the fence. Because I, I know the board uh, does not sound like they are amenable to having a shed like that in the back. I, I think some sort of Solid structure would be better, but it doesn't sound like the board is looking in that direction. Well, right now there's a whole tent there, and that's not being used for tires. No, they're on the, it's on the side of that. Yeah. 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 The the yeah. So we are talking about doing that. And that's why if it would be probably better to have some sort of you know wood structure, maybe some sort of roof, so the rain didn't get to it, but. It doesn't sound like the board was looking in that direction, so I was just proposing a, a fenced area. <clears throat> but I, I think, I'm not sure if I'm, Andrew was finished. I think I'm wondering what the neighbor's view is, and maybe we need to ask Yeah, the well, I know one of the concerns is if you look down into the yard, yeah. there's already the six-foot fence there. Exactly. Another six-foot fence isn't going to make much of a difference. Well, replacing that fence an might be an option if... If you were required to have a fence, this fence is fairly old and I think we do need deteriorating, a whether it's yours or not. We, we, Maybe a new fence would allow the neighbors to remove their fence, and it would help to screen it a little bit more if there's openings in the fence. I don't know if that's part of the issue. Or if it's more looking down from your houses. Can I ask mm -hmm. the neighbors? Brenda Hibbert, 17 Higgins. Um, yeah, basically the chain link fence has been there for as long as we've been there, 30 whatever years. I'm not even sure to tell you the truth. I think it's our fence, but I'm not entirely sure. But there is another fence on the other side of that that was Greater Boston Motorsports. It was, right. or it was a wooden fence. It's, you know, it's... it's decayed. Yeah. It's and decayed. The, the thing about the tires is they are, they, they have been removed recently, but they are so close. They're right on the corner of our property. And a big concern is um, if it rains and any of the, the water collects in there, you get your mosquitoes and whatnot. And, and just because it's so close to our garage and whatnot, and, and I, guess I don't want to fire, it's like they're just so, it's right in the corner right next to our house. 
Okay. <laughs> Great. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that insight. Okay. So getting them onto your property, out of the buffer, replacing and your fence. Replacing my fence. Make it prettier and we're replacing it where? What long I think the whole length. There are two fences. There's an old chain link and there an old fence that we put up yes. back in the day when we, when we uh, like this, right? Yeah, all the way around. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like that. That's it. Even on the other side of the garage, put, possibly put your after the roof. Shed no higher than that, or just an open corral to put the tires in, so that they mm -hmm. yeah. are not visible. So they're not leaning on a private property owner's garage. Well, I think if there's a shed, there'll be there's a, a a fence or a closed fence here, so there's not they're not leaning on. Well, back here they may be. I don't know. No, but we're, what? No, but they're proposing a, a closed corral here. With right, closed if you close corral, then they won't be. So therefore, there won't be any. Meaning on does that else's does fence. that fence need to extend all the way out to Quincy Street? There is a um, fence there now. Yeah. Well, the thing about this this fence here, there's actually an agreement between the prior owner of this Quincy Street property, where uh, there's there's a portion of my client's property which is actually being used by the by the neighbor, and likewise there's a portion of the neighbor's property that we're using. Awesome. There's there's been an agreement that says where the fence is. Oh, is that the well, I'm just wondering about replacing your fence. Yeah, you can replace it in the same location, yeah. possibly, but if it's deteriorating and it's an eyesore for the neighborhood and it's not doing the function of screening, which is what we're concerned about, mm -hmm. and providing um, the buffer. Yeah, I, I would say though, this is—I don't believe this is as much the area of concern as back here has been, because uh, this is looking at the back side of the building, which is. And the you know, the other area would be this shed and the dumpster area, which uh, Rod has said he's looking to beautify that. So I don't think there's th this fence does not. Okay, I think do we'll keep same. that open until we okay. have a neighbor's comment yeah. on that after we go around the board. We'll try to keep it organized here. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll prefer it. Okay. okay so so I, I would put the fence up here like a solid yeah. wood fence if that's acceptable we'll replace the old fence solid wood six. maybe painted it green or something like that nice fence nice wood fence put your shed up here um, I mean if you came back with a special permit and a design for this thing we could look at something but right okay. now you don't have okay, well so it, it's it's got to be something and I agree with everybody else it, it's out of here okay well I got nothing. You given me nothing of that to well, look at, so it's that was very my, hard to make a judgment about uh, what might be appropriate. I'm, I'm not going to deny that was what I was primarily focused right, on. Right, we didn't want to focus on that this evening. But is we're is, on is this a session where we're going to give a, a yeah. on special permit? Yeah, so, so everything that you bring to us is what we're is, approving, and if you don't bring it, we can't approve it. Right, so it makes So you it didn't hard. bring us a. Right. Okay. An alternate. So, so the points are the, the fence, the shed, the permanent. Um, public zone here, which is for motorcycle parking, potentially for the bike, right? With a with an indication of so this is public at night. A motorcycle can come in here and park. Um, um, or you pull your truck in there. We do. Oh, the the truck pulls was, in there. So you're saying it's, yeah. it's only daytime. Day yeah. While we're all hours of operation. It's not it really. Public no, parking. we wouldn't. Well, I don't no, think we'd not call it at night right after right closing. It well, it's customer it's parking. It's customer parking. So there's no parking. customers at yeah, night. Yeah, you can keep that public parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's 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 just, And I think it's good for them to bring their friends. Fenced off. <laughs> customer yeah. parking. You were going to do something in here to, to beautify this? Well, we area. removed and eliminated per the board's request. We displayed a couple of scooters or what, what have yeah. you all front here to attract uh, mm. people to see us. And uh, so we opted to not do that. And well, I, I think legally you can't do that because you were obstructing the sidewalk. We, it was, I agree. It's not an option. It was not an option. So, there thank was you. Just enough not spot an for a scooter. <laughs> so, the in Italy would be okay. You, you're, get, you're coming in here to get your tires and batteries, yes. but yeah. there's a parking place there. So, that's not a parking place. Uh, it can't be a legal parking place if you've got access through here. It's not. It's we, a, well, it's not in our camp, it's temporary. A, that's a path. That, that it's a path that you put a car in, but it's not a path. I, I would place. say the, that th this could be the main way of getting into that shed. And so, so that this so that's be permanent and closed point. off. Yeah, all right, that, yeah. that's closed off. Because otherwise, we can't count that spot. Correct. And, and I do think that you could have Mike look at this thing. Because you also have fire issues and so forth. I want to make sure you don't have a 
dead end condition that, uh, that you know, I don't know how they're, I'm assuming they're pulling a hose around the back. But once you close that off. Well, there's, there's a gate here currently. Okay. okay. Um, well, there already is a gate. So which which a, yeah. can be opened. Okay. So, okay. So there's no, no fire issue there. I would like Mike to look at this plan. Okay. okay. Once I have it, we will get right. it by Mike. Um, what else was on the list? Um, handicap? Do you have a requirement for handicap? Okay. We've never uh, had one. Do you, are you required to have one in your count if you have 13 spaces required that you're asking us for a reduction to 10, basically? Yeah. 11, I guess Mike, I can comment on that. Mike responded, Mike Byrne, the Director of Inspectional Services, responded that when this was originally permitted, an ADA space was not required, so he, he said he would stick with that. Okay. I'll have to be on the street. Okay. Um, the... Um, display, display and service parking zone, which would be now back in display and service zone would be here, okay. And we're talking about you clearing that out after hours, or how, how what's the, the deal? clearing that out? I'm going to effective immediately remove that tent within 30 days and remove. Uh, I'm going to remove thin out that by bringing it to an off-site facility. We have a warehouse in Beverly, it's the only, only option. And at night? And at night? What happens? I'm more going to make room and push it all in, like we used to, before we grew. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So um, then um, we talked about the other tenants, the music room? Not a tenant, he's a guest. My Okay. And that's been addressed. So hopefully, is better. So I better. think th this starts to move into a set oh, of conditions. <laughs> I think that's the. Uh, I think it. That's the Bruce. If you're writing down the. Yeah, I'm trying to keep. So up. those are the specific. Those are the specific things. The. Uh, the fence and distinguishing of customer motorcycle parking. Mm -hmm. The uh, removal of the tent. The addition of a shed within outside, you know, um, respecting the seven foot buffer. Seven and a half. Seven and a half foot buffer. And the additional fence between the existing uh, neighbor's garage all the way around. And the uh, improvement of the dumpster location screening, which yeah. doesn't mean an open chain link fence should be a solid kind of a you know, fence you don't have to look inside to select right. the door. Those are the things I think that are specific uh, plan issues that have to be should be shown on the plan. signage. What? Signage. Well, we haven't gotten to that, right? Oh. Signage. That's right. Then there are a number of conditions that we talked about last time, and and those one of them was the music room and the use of the music room. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to grant a special permit, we have a series of conditions that. And I would really have liked that you had listed these things. And but you kind of said, I might have done that, I did that, I did that. But I think we're trying to list these things so they become part of the special permit. Okay. And I forget now, was it only for lesson and practice and not for yes. concerts or for? For band practice. Right. No band practice, lessons and practice. So there's a condition. That's the condition. Nothing after 10 p.m. Right. Condition number one. Then you were talking about... That was uh, to be immediate. Yeah. Yep. Then you were talking about um, all the things that happen around the neighborhood, particularly on Higgins, going up Quincy, and even on Robbins. Yes. Parking on Higgins and, and the use of your employee parking there. That's number one. Can you endeavor, can you put into the special permit that you will have your employees not park I, I would say that might be tough to say someone can't park on a public street. And maybe maybe Bruce here's, can talk here, here's to Here's the issue I want to get at. You've got, here's the issue I want to get out on Higgins, because uh, as I understand it, you've got your parking places for your employees. You've got business parking places, which are people coming in and parking, and I know that the two reason everybody's coming in there too. And then you've got uh, trucks coming in, driving up with deliveries that are waiting there 
to come around and deliver, because that's what I heard, if I got that right. They were in and out in less than 30 minutes, no more than an they hour. They were parked there for a long time, okay, according to the, the neighbors. So what you have is a triple whammy on that road that could result in emergency vehicles and so on being blocked. So I'm looking for a way to get a special permit condition in there that has you monitoring that, okay. such that you're required to clear that, uh, keep it keep it clear even to the point where you tell some employees they can't park there, because you've got it, it, it's too many things on the same road. Where are we talking in particular? I think we're talking Higgins. I might add Quincy as well. Quincy and Higgins. to monitor to always have clear emergency <coughs> vehicle access at all times. Drop-off vehicles cannot stand on Higgins. In other words, he's got, mm -hmm. I think what's happening is you're getting a, a little truck with motorcycles on it, or three wheelers or whatever you're selling. They're pulling up and they're waiting to be allowed to go into your shop and unload. Mm -hmm. That's good. The applicant question though, I yeah, yes. is, is there a spot on the site where the drop-off could occur? Not yet. No. No. Someday in the future, when the tire company ceases and desists, that parking lot will become mm -hmm. effectually mm -hmm. ours, and our trucks that come in will. Which parking lot? The Darlington Tire office. parking lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in the future, though, and, and our first order yeah. of business would be that, is that that's going to be our main lot. Like, would assist us greatly in not having our trucks that drop off twice a day. I understand that they're 30 to minutes to, to an hour. They should be in and out every day. I don't know if they're waiting more than two hours. How will your customers, though, and people park when, there while you're I also turn, loading when there? When the tire is gone, then I'm a motorcycle shop completely. There's I understand, but you have parking spaces here for customers. 80% of my clients ride. They don't, this, we don't have issues that many with on motorcycles. And the public transportation is about 45% of my client base. The other 80% of my client base ride. And so, so they ride, I, they I still need to park. Fair amount, I don't have a lot of automotive need. They ride, they still need to park. They can use these automobile spaces as motorcycles. Oh, for spaces motorcycles, also. yeah. And this, this so I'm wondering where the loading right area there. comes. Right in here. Where right that's here. my motorcycle and, park. And how do people get in and out of the site? How do they back up? You're They're in and out. I engineers mean, should be able to speak to that. Okay, um, how does that work? Well, what I would say is this is more or less a one-way area because they're coming in off of Quincy, they're exiting on Mass Ave mm -hmm. because you really can't do two-way in this, especially with exactly. a trailer. So um, the loading and unloading, are we talking right now? Well, well we that's what the future? Right now, Mr. Right Sarandula is saying that when the tire place leaves, okay, he's so going to do his loading here, and I see that as an impossibility. Well, uh, actually, for circulation, for circulation, and actually, I would say that the, the the trucks can come in, and then they can actually back it up. They back the trucks up. Yeah. And then your one way. Regardless, the tire still exists. So well, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's hypothetical yeah. at this point. Yeah. And we've been using Mass Ave right out front forever, and we want it to be quick and efficient. It's not ever more than an hour. When these trucks are dropped off twice a day, we're in and out quickly. It, just to be objective, and I, I applaud the direction Andy's going in, um, but you know, I don't think a loading zone requirement was a requirement under the original special permit. No. So I don't know if we have the ability to impose that now. Um, perhaps we could, but. Um, you know, our ability also to monitor the public way is, I don't think we have that. That's not in our but can, is jurisdiction. There a, is there a condition that they, that they internally monitor where employees and service trucks park? Um, is the 10 spaces yeah. supposed to be, or 13 spaces supposed to be for customers and employees, or? It doesn't distinguish. It doesn't distinguish. On site. But it's supposed to handle everybody right. that's and associated with this business, it's, customers it's, and it's employees. It's up to the business to decide if they want to put all their employees on there and have nobody a place to park for customers. It does kind of happen sometimes. Mm. It's unbelievable. And then all your customers park on the street. figure it out, right? Mm. But 
because there's an issue, Bruce, I'm just trying to figure out if there's an internal monitoring commission mm -hmm. that would allow uh, Mike and enforcement officers to come back and say, look, we're, you know, uh, we're, we're getting this problem again. Um, how are you monitoring overflow traffic? I, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I can't write it, it, it. It's hard to um, write a condition like that in a way that the zoning right. enforcement officer can force it. That's the, the other part of the problem. Um, it, I mean, it could be a requirement that the Boston Motorsports that requires their drop-off vehicles, their service vehicles, to come directly to Mass Ave and or their own property. Mm -hmm. You require that. So you, you don't, you're not allowed, you tell them you're not allowed. On the condition that you require your service vehicles to arrive either on site or on Massachusetts Avenue. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe that's possible. Because what I'm hearing is what's happening on Higgins is not a good situation. It gets so much pressure on them from I heard from the neighbors last time that it literally closes off the street. And Quincy, it sounds and like. Quincy. There was a, so I'm looking for. I a agree way. with the neighbors. There was a, this particular year. I come to find out was an unbelievable. Was a lot of construction going on. A pavement. It was extremely tough. On uh, regular occasions, my understanding is it's it's been livable for all these years. This particular summer was tough you for all that you, construction. You know, would, would you <laughs> condition that they endeavor to monitor service vehicles to encourage Massachusetts Avenue and on-site deliveries versus um, other? And on the condition that they instruct all, that they instruct test driving, and here's where I'm probably having another trouble figuring out a condition, but the other thing was just like the while driving right up Quincy all the way up mm -hmm. as a it, test drive. Yeah, that's not happening any longer, with, and it was very seldomly happening with any of our staff. You in any condition that they, that they take steps to we, reduce, yeah, we uh, reduce test drives within the neighborhood? I mean, these are... Mm -hmm only so much teeth in them, but it, at least it puts in writing what the concerns of the mm -hmm. board were. And that could be by putting that. That's, uh, that could be by putting a little sign in your yeah. thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, that could go along it is, with what you post in the shop. So yeah, you post in the shop. Yeah, people understand that. That. It's our yeah. policy yeah. That, uh, that... I'm going to tell my clients, too, the handful of them that are that, but we're, we've stopped and cease and desist any of the uh, test driving uh, in the neighborhood. There's some though, I mean there's some basic just but with the, there's a handful of our motorcycles. Like, like thankfully we, we, we don't have um, Harley Davidson's. I know the last days. thing is... They're uh, usually quieter bikes for the most part. The last thing is the submission of signage because that's not part of the... I don't see it as yet been submitted as part of a special permit is not required to put signage. Previous special permits have required that any changes in tenancy, that the signs have to be reviewed by the by the board. So there are no changes to previous signage, you're saying? None have been presented. Okay, okay. I'll just leave it at that for the, for the time being. So if there are changes to signs contemplated, they should be they should also be presented to the board. Should we ask the applicant are there changes to signs contemplated? Well, at this time, except well, to make I want to just the uh, signs that were mentioned earlier. If that's something. They, that's important. the signs I was referring to the oh. customer parking oh, signs. Oh, you were referring to the overall signage. No. No, there's no change to the overall signage, but I'm happy to oblige and put the customer signs and the neighborhood signs on the building. I think, Carol, are you talking about the sign saying, you know, tire, tire place and stuff, things like that, which at this point no. aren't changing? That, that's, that's what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. no, that's not. So that's not changing. So we're not going to. The condition that those signs be reviewed, those additional signs that are part of the changes being made in, as part of this permit. Like the sign here saying, uh, motorcycle parking, parking, uh, 
we will get customer it. motorcycle yeah, parking, banking. Um, whatever else there is that, that went with it. That may be it. Okay. So I think we have, have a lot of the neighbors here again who are waiting patiently. I'd like to, before we put all these thoughts, <laughs> don't lose any of this. Yeah. Chris has yeah. been writing, I've been writing, and he's been talking. <laughs> no, it's very good. It's been very good. So I want to open it up to the residents. I want to hear from you what's been happening since the last hearing, what you've heard here that we're going to be proposing if we're missing something. So again, if you could state your name, address your name, your address, address the board, not the applicant. That would be appreciated. So any comments? Again, my name is Nancy Savioli. I live at 24 Higgins Street. I've been there for 37 years. And like I said earlier, the problem has just gotten worse over the years as far as the parking. I understand that I guess you don't have a total control over that, but it's a hazard. It's not just because it's an inconvenience. It's a hazard. When you have an emergency vehicle, that can't get down to take a bedridden man to the hospital where they have to bring the stretcher down by foot, go in and get him and bring him back by foot. That's a concern. If there's a fire, then we're in trouble, okay? Does it happen each and every day that a vehicle can't get down? No, but there's no guarantee what day or night it can't get down. I've had even cars that can't get down. In the wintertime, Higgins Street is a narrow street. When people park opposite each other and there's snow banks on either side, then sometimes even a car can't get down. So it really is a concern. And aggravation is I pay taxes. I don't get my street clean because there's always a car in front of my house. <coughs> I have to clean the street even though I pay taxes. I mean, the Department of Public Works posts when they're going to clean the street. But as I said, I go off to work, my car's in the driveway, and I come home and my street's not cleaned. We've had rubbish not picked up because, again, the rubbish truck can't get down. So the congestion on Hickett Street is, is a major concern to me, mostly because of safety and then the other issues. So I'm Diane Magnuson. I live at 12 Hagen Street. Um, I've been at the house. I grew up in the house, so I've lived there for over 50 years. Um, in terms of what it looked like before and the chain link fencing there, most of the houses along this whole area have got a wrap with chain link that were there when the houses were built. So I would say that chain link fence that goes from Quincy Street all the way across to the property that abuts the cleaner, what used to be Alma Cleaners, that was all chain link that was there, the original chain link fence. Um, your comment, the comment that was made about uh, customer parking or part using parking, six parking spaces on Quincy Street. If you come down Quincy Street in the afternoon at four o'clock, it's a one-way street mm -hmm. because there are cars parked up on both sides of the street. We've got Jimmy's, we've got the gas station, all right? They're parked on both sides of the street. You have got to wait till the car comes down in order to get into Quincy Street it turns into a one-way road. The way that people wrap around the corners, you can't see as you pull out on Mass Ave, or if you come out, of, uh, come out or come into Higgins Street from Quincy Street, they wrap around the corners, so you, again, you have to wait for the cars to pull out of Higgins Street in order to take a left to get onto Higgins Street off of Quincy Street. Robbins Road, not so much, because I think it's further on, but we still get a lot of cars that park up Robbins Road. We did have a lot of construction there this summer, they, did, they were doing a lot of um, work along Robbins and, um, and Higgins Street, which certainly did create even more chaos in terms of parking. But that's not a one-time, that, that's like a one-time shot. This is an ongoing issue and an ongoing consideration. I have noticed less of, you, of the general work. I assume employee vehicles parked on Higgins Street. Somebody owns a green van that was parked on Higgins Street all day the other day, and then yesterday I saw it on Robbins Road. So I don't know who owns that green van. It's an Astro van, but that's a work van, and that ends up either on Higgins Street or Robbins Road for all day, every day. And on, I was off on vacation last week and sitting in my house on uh, 
Thursday afternoon. The motorcycle started at the base of Quincy Street and I heard it go all the way up, probably to the water tower. So it doesn't ha ha that wasn't happening as frequently as it has, but it still happens. Whether it's your customers or not, I don't know. But it is a Kawasaki type motorcycle that just roars up, up right up Robbins Road and I think they just do it to get up to speed and see how fast the bike can make it up there. So again, telling your customers would be great. Telling your employees not to test drive motorcycles around there um, certainly would be, is, is another key piece. Thank you. Brenda Hibbert, 17 Higgins Street. And I just want to echo what my neighbors are saying as well. Um, a nice high fence would be, would be pretty nice. I think also back in the, for the special permit, I think I recall um, reading that there's supposed to be a green area out there and a picnic table out in that area where I think where all the um, motorcycles and whatnot. I think that was in there at some point, a green area. We actually even had one way back when. But that was part but of the green area and a picnic We did. And that was, was part of the. But it's since. Yeah, I think that was part of the permit, or part of the deal. Mm. Just just Sorry. Water seeking its own level. I think you're too big for the space. Mm -hmm. It's too bad you can't merge with Myrax somehow and work with them or something. Maybe. I think I'm going to shrink is what I'm going to do. I think that we're going to move some of it off site. And so you're going to satellite? Satellite. We're satellite and we're going to shrink it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank jo you, Brenda. Uh, Joshua Fink, 10 Quincy Street. Uh, <coughs> I'm the newest member, I guess, here. I've only owned the property for two years. Um, so. To be, you know, to be honest, I did know uh, when I was buying the property that I was buying next to a motorcycle shop, to be honest. That even reduced the price a little bit uh, and allowed me to buy the property. So, uh, you know, I did know in that regard what I was getting into. Um, the previous owner did not, in point of fact, mention the music studio whatsoever. Um, that, that I found out on my first night when I found and I could hear the kick drum and the bass, um, which go totally through the soundproofing. Still do. Still here, I must. I must be honest. Um, I don't understand its 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 reasoning, its purpose. I don't see a need for it at all, at all. Um, that's 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 the one biggest biggest non-starter I've got. The problems we have on Quincy are ones that I understand uh, are are not people. You know, I don't I don't necessarily see malevolent intent, but we do have a difficulty. Um, I've seen I, it. It looks to my eyeball, and I do get I do watch from my porch in the, in, in season. Um, that we've got more employees uh, from, from GDM uh, who are parking, and they need a place to park. I do understand that. Uh, you know, they're not, they're, they're, they're going to work. Um, I also will say that um, they have helped uh, help me plow out in the snow time, so I don't really want to, uh, yeah, I'm not looking uh, to start unnecessary trouble nor to, nor to throw the employees under the, under the bus, uh, yeah, just for that sake. The, is that, um, whoever made the comment, I'm sorry, about, about it being a one-way street, is absolutely correct. Uh, you really can't get two vehicles down there on a, on a summer day, never mind a winter day. I would submit that the town, and I know that it isn't necessarily in the purview of this board, but if, uh, if there's any way that I or the board can recommend to the town uh, doing a survey and recommending that one side of the street be closed off to parking entirely, I really honestly think that that's the best solution. It doesn't, you know, that, 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 that's, a, that's a separate issue. I do understand that. I do think it's the safest solution um, because you need to, and I'm not even saying this out of pure self-interest. I'd understand if, they, if, if the survey decided that, that it was uh, my side of the street that people needed to park on. I'm not even just shooing people away from, from it. Um, it's just getting emergency vehicles in and out. As I say, during a summer day right now, that's near impossible. Never mind when we get this, the snow that, that we had last year and that we're expecting this year. Um, I would like to, I, um, the last issue, I wasn't here at the last meeting, so if, if anything's been addressed. The uh, trucks, when they are loaded, loading and unloading, when they come by empty, um, I do have to say, if I can respectfully submit to the board, that they go too fast. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a two-year-old son, and I have an eight-month-old son who's now crawling. Uh, so, of course, that's a major concern, uh, but they come around, they come around that corner way too fast. They come down, either that or they go all the way up Robbins and then, um, not down Higgins, but the second one up there. And that, that I would like to see. And honestly, once again, I'd you know, like to see speed bumps on Quincy, uh, regardless 
uh, but I know it's a bigger issue. But that's just for the safety also of the, of the school children, because I have school children passing by every day to get to Austin. Thank you. So you haven't heard any difference in the music studio, or have you? I have not heard any difference in the music studio. And as I say, that's that that's the biggest. I do have that question for the board. I mean, is it is the building zone for that? Is that it? Is that is that within your purview? Um, it's the biggest non sequitur of the whole thing uh, that I see. It I see it does no bus extra business to the space. Uh, I don't you know I, I see it does uh, provides no uh, no can't provide any significant extra income to GBM. Um, so I'm not I'm not really t questioning something that threatens a business base or. Or, or livelihood here, um, it, it, you know. As I said, it was it was the one part that was not mentioned to me at all in the sale. <laughs> so I'll I'll give that to Mr. Pothier, the, uh, the the former owner. <laughs> he did a good job. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Norman <clears throat> Magnuson from uh, Twelve Higgin Street. Um, I have noticed that uh, since the last meeting, there aren't as many employees parking on Higgin Street. Uh, what concerns me about that is once we're all gone from here, is that just going to reoccur? Uh, I don't know what our recourse is for that. If it does, uh, do we contact the board? Do we contact the zoning officer? Uh, that's just a question. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, you know, on the different parking and, and flows, and, you know, there is the traffic advisory. Transportation advisory. Tra sorry, transportation okay. advisory. And I'd suggest you go there because they're the ones that will then suggest to the selectmen things like only parking on one side sure. and that type of thing. That's sure. or speed really bumps. not. No, or uh, speed yeah, bumps yeah, yeah, I, I knew no, that no, no, but I think they're the I think they're really good ideas. It's just that and, and as far as like, you know, people cruising up and down, you know, I, I must admit, I I asked the police to if I've got a problem in a certain corner, I say, hey, can you check out this corner? And oftentimes they do. So I think there, are, there is the ability to kind of um, help out with that kind of stuff. I'm not sure how much we can. Is TAC you know, also responsible for adding signs in areas? Uh, like no parking from here to corner? No, it's also a selective. sign that was requested. That's, that's also a selective. selective. In fact, it, that's a selective. It's also so the proper means um, for getting to the Transportation Advisory Committee is actually writing to the Board of Selectmen, board of Selectmen and asking okay. them to consider uh, recommending that TAC uh, advise them on the matter in prepare a report. Especially on the one-way or the one-sided parking because yeah. it's not just Boston no, Motorsports, yeah. it sounds like yeah, it's so Jimmy's, it's other it's, businesses. Yeah, and that's, yeah. So this would help keep your clear Yeah, and that's why access. that's why I bring it up to the board. Is that I do understand that, you know, it's, it's not right. all one, you know, that it's, it's a high use street. And, and, and then enforcement, of course yeah. you'd call the police if it's yeah. being violated on any of these. Yeah. 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 Even yeah. now, without the sign of being parked up to the corner, Yeah. that's an enforcement issue. Because mm -hmm. we get, when the junior high has events, they it's all the way down when the Greek church has its festival, yeah. the streets are just packed. So that's, that's a police enforcement. Correct. Right. Yeah. It's a tsunami of vehicles. <laughs> yeah. I, well, that's I, I out just, of our control. No, I, 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 understand. <laughs> I just have one more thing to add, which is probably out of your control also. But, you know, I don't know if it's, it's still done, but it sounds like we may be pushing um, them to bring motorcycles inside. Again, I know they used to bring them all into the uh, Boston Motor, the uh, BMW, the building with the, the old Armand Cleaner building. They used to push a lot of them in there. you got to figure every, every one of these motorcycles has at least a gallon of gas in it. Are they permitted to be in, inside a building, which is a huge fire hazard? Yes. Yes. Uh, absolutely. In, 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 the, uh, in, in the BMW, the old Almond cleaner building. The motorcycles that are in there. That's, that's a lot of gas. gas. Absolutely, some do. Yeah, yeah a lot of gas. For a minute, we get checked regularly. We're in full compliance. We don't uh, always have that, please. Hmm. I think uh, the 1994 special permit anticipated that motorcycles would be stored inside. So, I don't know. They would have gas in them. I don't know. Uh, uh, there's up to 30 40 motorcycles today. You're talking, yeah. you know, close to a 55 gallon drum worth of gas. 
two car just, garage. Just same thing. Yeah, two same SUVs. Thing. No, I, <laughs> I know that. You know, more. But it's a much tighter space. I don't know how the Arlington Fire Department works. I work in Cambridge. We have to get permits for gasoline you know, wherever we put it, and it states the amount of gallons that can be in there. I'm not sure how the Arlington Fire Department works. So that's Good just tonight. a concern. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you for coming again. <laughs> oh, you're yes. I just since the buffer strip at the back has come up a couple times, it is in the nineteen eighty two special permit that a buffer strip at the rear of the motorsports building should be planted and maintained to achieve a six foot high densely spaced screen within three years. All planters and plant material located on the site shall be subject to the approval. Um, it also mentions a fence shall be replaced with a new cedar fence which is six feet high, and that's what Bruce re was referring to. Okay. And I just want to mention that's, um, it, it's in the zoning bylaw, in fact, that park, on-site parking is usually screened with either a fence or a vegetative buffer. So this isn't anything that um, is imposed on this special permit and, and no others. It's very common, it's very typical for the board to include that in a special permit and it reflects the building by law. And I understand that you said the soil is hard and compacted and it's shady. You can replace soil and there are a number of very good shade plants that act as <coughs> evergreen screens. So there is really no reason not to have that screen there. I realize it's dyed and the ground has become... No, I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to do that. I, I, I think it can it. be reestablished. <coughs> okay, so... We are going to attempt to make a motion, I believe. <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff written down, so I'm going to see okay. if I can get this all out. But I don't and profess that I'm going to you. capture any. We can plan out, though, because we're going to need to copy all of the notes onto. Assuming this heads in an optimistic direction, we're going to need to make two sets of plans with the, the notes on it. So don't put it away. <laughs> we're going to do that right now. Add the notes right on the plan. It depends on what the board, how the it, board moves. If, it, if I am able to say something, I'm going to propose that we do and uh, to accept tonight. We'll make these plans. Let's pass this. We've been here a lot, and this week. Well, I think that's what we are saying. Is going through and the board, having it on the plan. I, what's I, being required? I don't know what Mr. Fitzsimmons is prepared to say, but if, if the board acts. There will be the necessity to document what's approved on two sets of plans. Okay. So uh, the board can be documenting one, documenting one, and they're documenting the other, or we're documenting two right now. Whatever is one approved will have to be shown on a plan that the board has on file. The applicant will probably also want to keep a file for a record of what it is they've committed to. And they're going to be submitting another plan to us, I'm assuming, with all those changes. Though. That would be terrific. Well, that's that was, what I'm assuming that would have to point. happen, yeah. But, I mean, we, and I've been I, I writing could, on this to be I was just going to say, we could submit one right now well, informally, and then I'll formally have to I, produce one. I, say, I think that's what we're already talking about. Oh. So, mm -hmm. I think Bruce is going to... Over. Take my best shot at uh, putting this all down. So, uh, I move that the ARB approve the parking plan shown or denoted as parking plan in Arlington, Massachusetts, dated September 18, 2014, prepared by Rover Survey, provided that this approval does not recognize the four interior quote spaces shown by the plan on the interior lifts of the tire shop as legal parking spaces under the zoning bylaw and subject to... Hold on. Hold on, let's do that first. Okay. X out those four. Yep. X. Why don't you pass the other plan down here then? So we have one to look at. Sorry. Okay. So I just <laughs> wanted him to do it on a clean one. He doesn't need that. And subject to the following conditions. One, remove concrete pad to make parking space 11 a legal size parking space. Make legal. Yeah. Two, install security fence to separate motorcycle customer parking area from the motorcycle 
storage and display area on the pavement between the two buildings. Three, remove the so-called tent I'm sorry, structure. What did you call that? You call uh, that a uh, security, fence? security fence? Security fence. To separate security. motorcycle customer yep. parking area from the motorcycle Just wanted to get storage the same and wording. display area. Display. Three, remove the so-called tent structure. Establish the buffer zone, landscaping, and cedar fencing as required by the original special permit. Such fencing to run along the side yard there and rear lot lines adjacent to residential properties, but not to include the easement area approaching Quincy Street. Right, so from the garage, the garage from over, the other side of the garage. from this side Here. over. Yeah. Okay, from this. Okay. Everything east of the garage. Yeah. Um, which side of the garage are we talking about? Well, well, I think that's where it starts. Well, I think we're going to say it starts on the other side. Is that okay. Mm -hmm. Here? East of the garage. But I think this is all just one fence there, so why would you there's, stop there? There's no fence. There's no fence, it's just okay. the, oh, okay. it's the back of the garage. Right here. That's okay. why I was saying higher is leaning against the garage. Yeah, so okay. There. So we got that? So east of the yeah. garage, the east corner of the garage, northeast corner. Um, Re-establish the bicycle parking. Was that number five? The that was, no, that was four. Oh, that was four. First, that was a well done because you said re-establish the buffer zone and planting. Yes, yes. I said. And cedar fence, so that's all. Buffer yeah. landscaping yeah. and cedar fencing okay. as required by the original SSC special permit. Yeah. In the locations that we just talked about and worked up on the plan. The bike rack up there? Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yes, okay, reestablish the bike rack um, at the... Is it good? What about adjacent yeah. to the uh, easterly planter? Uh, adjacent to the easterly planter? Right in here? Yeah. Because okay. this is not Do we know how many bikes was yeah. required? And it's what really the bike parking this rack thing. was? Okay. I mean, I this is original special permit. Yeah, it's like what it was. Yeah. This is where it gets it's more of the number. Is it a six bike, twelve bike? This is like okay. very yeah, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Yes. I don't know what uh, it was. We established the uh, bike rack at the front entrance. It's where it always was. I don't mind it being here, but it's over in the off to the property. I'm oh. suggesting that it stays central to the front entrance. Yes. Yeah. Only oh. because I could I could put it right up on the pad, or if the board allows, if we could go look at it. They either maybe How high right is there. that pad? Right. You put it just right there. You have to go up as yeah, far as the steps with right their bike? Except no, it's not from the alley from the tire side. From that, you can roll right up it, to it. And if it's, is it flush with the side yeah, seat? Yeah. I think there's a step. There's a step right. in the front. Step should probably look with, I think. One step, okay. Yeah. I'm seeing these things as though there's four steps. But that's going down a little farther up. Well, I'm suggesting that we leave it where it is at this room. You have to make this a full parking place. But I might have room right here. You see this area right here? This could be a perfect bike rack, maybe. I'm just saying maybe I have to go physically look at the site. Or I put it up here because this you can roll right up here. How about just reestablish? Yeah, bike bike parking that was required by okay. original yeah, special permit. Yeah, why don't we do that? Mm -hmm. So whatever was required at that time, if it was we just a five bike, bike rack yep. or I'm gonna whatever put it was. back the bike rack. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure which condition this is. I think it's seven. Where is seven? It? Um, I think we're at six. I thought five was the bike rack. Five is the bike rack. Okay, so six. Is six is right. Oh, I wasn't even labeling it, but I'll go back and do that. Okay. I, I was numbering Do you want to take a minute and go back and do yeah. that before we go further, yeah. Andy? Okay. Um, one is removing, one is remo um, he first said this, but he didn't give a number on it. Yep. Second was removing, first was remove the concrete pad. Right. So PA 11 yeah. becomes a legitimate parking Correct. space. Second was installing the security fence, too. Third was removing the tent. Yep. Fourth was doing the installing a seven and a half foot buffer with plant material, replacing the cedar fence, or replacing with the cedar fence. Right. And then number five is what we've just Install talked about. Install the bike, 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 bike. Okay. Okay. Six. Erect a screened, fenced 
corral or a shed to store tires. Or open top shed. Or open top shed to store tires, the final specifications of which to be submitted and approved by the ARB. Or, or I would say the director. Or the uh, director of yeah, planning and community yeah, yeah, service. Yeah, 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 let's do the director. Planning and community service. Planning and economic development. Got the, I think Carol's just so we went just the verbally, the people I have the cedar fence installed, I may have the erected screen shed yeah. corral be shed. the same cedar material. Oh, okay. Good. So it'll be the same people. We'll have a licensed fence person. Great. <coughs> Okay, so uh, <coughs> seven, and I, I don't have enough specifics on this, but Mr. Cerebral mentioned that he intends to improve or beautify the existing dumpster and shed, so oh, yeah, that's I'll add that. Yep. Um, and, and is that at the discretion of the planning director what, also to approve? Yes. Yes. But okay. I'd like to propose it verbally and we can put it in the notes is to have it match the rest of the building. So blends. Either that or the cedar. So I, the, the, the I don't mind doing the cedar, but it would. It, it, what it, is the building right now? It's a it's a it's a stucco, which the, the town asked us to have a very sand neutral colored stucco. So you want to do a stucco? I think just to have it blend. Yeah. Put open top. But just the way it is, but I'll stucco it out and make it blend and it's be pretty. And have a nice cedar gate on. it. You need some kind of gate to open it. Right? It's, a, it's a as approved by the director. Yeah, as approved by the director. As approved by the director. Yeah, that's, 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 that's good. That's good. Uh, that's good. Am I up to eight? Um, uh, store all motorcycles held for consignment uh, for storage off site. Nine. Remove. Uh, display motorcycles at night to interior locations. Ten, discontinue use of any portion of the premises as a music room unless specifically permitted under subsequent ARB approval. Uh, special permit amendment. Eleven. Can I just go back to the yes. discontinue or just have it be for, for the lessons with no level? Did we ever approve it? I mean, I think, yeah. that's, I, I think oh, it's okay. discontinue because you're supposed to notify us of any change of tenancy at the building. I understand that you call them guests, not tenants, but I think additional uses of the building, particularly where it's not ancillary to the main use of the building, you'd have to notify us. And it's a large disturbance to the neighbors, as you've heard. So seasons is okay. It's a it's a that's the pro bono part of my work there, but uh, I guess we'll. Uh, and I appreciate it. I'm a music lover, but I don't live that. next just, to the he studio. Kids. Yeah. It's just a pro. It's a it's I, a, it's I a labor of love. That's all. Um, so uh, I, I still don't understand. So uh, okay, so I, I, I think what we're know. saying is I, I'm not I'm not saying that we would close the door if you really wanted to put one in there, you but you have to come, come in and really apply for it instead of just having us kind of look the other way and say, okay. Um, Eleven, monitor delivery vehicles so that they drop off inventory either on site or on Mass Ave adjacent to the uh, to the business. Yeah, monitor delivery vehicles to encourage drop off, mm -hmm. so that they uh, to encourage drop off at Mass Ave or within the site. Yeah. Uh, next, post signs visible visible to employees and customers uh, to refrain from test driving motorcycles in the residential adjoining residential neighborhood. Are you going to have one yeah. sign for everything, or are you going to have a bunch of points for all the signs? Uh, that's up to them. No, no just I'm just going to have. That's I, up to them. Yeah. They could, you mean, no, I'm, no. What I'm asking is for our conditions here, or our, well, our special perimeter. You're saying no test driving. Yeah. There's well, so, I'm is saying there anything else we want to add to that? Parking. It, no, because he covered that. Else? 
Yeah, because I, I, I have to talk about what's on site. I can't really talk about public ways. That's not up to the board. To talking about no test driving on site? Well, so, posting signs post to sign. yeah. tell the employees and their customers not to test drive. Test not drive. to test drive. Yeah. And what so about the not, to, not to, oh, to, park. to park to restrict emergency access vehicle? Vehicles? No, I mean, that, I think we went through that and said that that's got to be a town mm -hmm. initiative because we can't really say who can park on the streets. That's However, what I was getting at. Are we going to add anything else to that? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's more about just trying to remind everyone to be good neighbors. No, yeah, this yeah. is a good neighbor sign. We're keep looking to refrain from test rights to keep the noise level down, and I'm going to have it printed up. And to practice maybe considerate parking. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> You know, I think all we can ask the applicant to do is to post the signage. I mean, we can't right. give, I mean, it's, you're, you're sort of giving the building for the, the zoning enforcement officer a, a very difficult task if you ask him to sort of monitor anything other than posting the signage to say that's the, the policy that, that, that we're trying to follow. Okay. I have two more. All right. Okay. Um, 13. Lucky. Any changes to signage shall be submitted and approved by the ARB. And then is that 13? I think uh, that was yeah. 13. Oh, was it? Oh, I think it was okay. up to 13. And then 14. Re repeat 13. Uh, uh, any it. changes to signage shall be submitted and approved by the ARB. Okay. And 14. All other conditions in previous special permits pertaining to the site shall remain in full force and effect, violation of which could be grounds for revocation of the special permit. That goes back to the original. Yeah. Unless specifically changed within this yes. special permit. Correct. So I'm saying all other conditions okay. from the previous special all permits, okay. plural, remain in full force and effect. Excellent. Is that all my scruples? Yeah. Bruce, may I get your notes later for the motion? You're welcome to. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I may have to rewrite them. Can't you read them? Yeah, well, good news. Yeah, it's nice that you got this, to too. So, so, much appreciate um, so that was the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> That's good. We made progress. Yes, we did. We made progress. Yes. We oh, thank right. you we for working with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, neighbors. What I would look to do is you take what we said and actually create the plan with most of what we've said. And some of these will be conditions off to the side yeah. because they're not. Specific. Or they'll be in in the write up as yeah. well. So, yeah. but yeah, I'll try can, to have it and then see it on the plan. The notes side, right? And then submit the plan to Carol, or give a copy of the plan to Carol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah especially the, since she has to approve a couple of the things. Uh, I think the details of the shed. Right. And the size of the, the shed. Is, so yeah. So you'll be in communication. Now, with now her. one. The bike thing. rack I mean, is being installed. We, we talked about a cedar fence, and I should have brought this up. What if he wants to put in a vinyl fence? Or it has to be cedar? Cedar was the original special I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand. I, that's, why I, well, that's why I said it. I don't know what his thought what process is, but... Neighbors are okay. I think as long as Carol is... I'm going to base that on the cost because I'm going to compare the two and then the look of it, and I'll let the board. I mean, the look of it actually, the white vinyl looks very clean. I, but not for very long. And with the history okay. of the patina tent, I would say the okay. cedar is your better choice. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I was just actually, you know, yeah. thought process and thinking a lot and, and going over what. White vinyl is done. gets filthy very quickly, and unless. I know, but that the, the, the and, neighbor's yeah. side will look pristine unless they don't keep it up. I'm going to look at the cost, and the board has suggested green or even another more earthly color. A it's more ornamental, be a, like painted fence. I, I would like to suggest that since the original permit specified cedar, and that was what was contemplated when the motion was being made, if a vinyl fence comes back, I would like that to return to the board. Okay, let's stay with the cedar. I, I, well, I don't think we want to bring the board up. Right. I don't blame you. Get, get out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, don't blame you. <laughs> I, think, I think the cedar is a good okay. fit for the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic. Right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the good plan. Thank you. In short, short notice.
Very short notice. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I, moving I, I right along. That you'd be willing to share your notes. Yeah, no, I'll be glad to write that up. Maybe we'll um, appreciate it too. The, uh, yeah. if, when I write it up, because my notes are a little crazy right now, if it doesn't sound like what I said, just let me know. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I wrote the notes down, not perfectly, but. Sorry, yeah, there we go. Which is nice. Very good. Okay. Okay. So, so now we'd like to reopen, continue the uh, environmental design review hearing for 1098 Mass Ave as it's related to the Verizon antenna and construction. Good evening. Good evening, Welcome Dan. Back. Good evening. Good evening. Have we met? <laughs> you, you might have to introduce yourself again for the audience. Would you like me to? Yes. Uh, I didn't know me, but <laughs> I'm Dan Klasnick. I'm the attorney for Verizon Wireless. and. Uh, the opportunity to appear before the board again. It appears as though things went well in the previous meeting, which I think was primary concern of the board. So I don't yes. know if you need me to say much other than to I don't think we need much. Uh, yes, other than I, I once again like to thank you for your patience and your perseverance. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I did have one question uh, that came up while we were um, talking with the previous applicant. Uh, during your construction, I'm curious now how your construction vehicles and those employees, the construction workers, how they will be accessing the site where their vehicles will be parked, and if we want to discuss that at all and make any stipulations for that. I mean, I'm not typically involved in that aspect of the project, but I would Imagine what would happen is Verizon Wireless would work with the property owner. Um, I think that most of their work would be up on the roof, utilizing just a regular pickups type service vehicle. But there would, I think, be a, a need to bring in, I don't know if they're going to, as they call, stick build the shelter on the roof or if they're going to bring in a truck to lift something over. That's what I'm wondering. You may even have trains to bring materials up to the top. Yeah, I think that, that that may be necessary, so there would certainly have to be some accommodation with the property owner to make certain that that was done in such a way. I would think that if we could get started, I think, quicker, it sounds like they slow down this time of the year and there's much less traffic on the site because simply the motorcycles aren't driven in the winter. And right. it's my understanding was Verizon Wireless is expectation and hope to still try and get this on the air this year if possible. I don't think it's going to be difficult with the appeal period and right. getting the building permit. You've heard all the impact on the neighborhood already. And this yes. year was some of that was due to construction in, in the area. So now we're introducing another yes, construction this, into the neighborhood. This would, of course, be a, a temporary disruption. Sure. But I'm sure there will be some additional traffic and vehicles initially. But then after that, it's as you know, an unmanned facility. I mean, I know Verizon Wireless puts these up, you know, in very congested areas. Sure. Certainly, others, you know, other Cambridge and other places. So, I don't know that I can specifically tell you what's going to happen because I'm not involved in that aspect. But I'm certain that they would work with the property owner, and we're certainly mindful, and I've certainly informed them of all the concerns with the site and difficulties that the town has had with the property owner. We certainly don't want to contribute any more to that. So. Okay. Do my colleagues have any questions um, related to Verizon's application? I know we looked at it in depth at the May meeting. Mm -hmm. I think it was when it, May 29th when it was first. June 2nd. Yeah, I think June 2nd. June 2nd when it was first presented to us, and we asked a lot of questions there. We asked about construction at that point. I'm any not, questions? I don't think I have anything new. Uh, Dan, do any of the photo simulations actually show the antennas on the proposed stealth uh, structures? Yes, they... if you uh, if you have this, this is what's right there. This is existing. Yeah. So those are T-Mobile, mm -hmm. as I recall. And then this would be Verizon Wireless. But you don't actually show the antennas themselves, or are they all screened they're behind screened. that? No, they're all they're screened. screened. They're behind they're, that. Everything okay. is screened. Yeah. OK. There's a good picture of the dumpster. I know, there's some interesting <laughs> one. Mm -hmm. 
also the fence. Yeah, your pictures were better than theirs. The fence, too, on the next one. Yeah, yeah. you see that? And the boat. The opening. The patinaed shelter. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I see the fence. I haven't looked at these in a while, so that's the Okay, so we have some rather standard, I think, special conditions that we've had on other um, EDRs for the same type of application. So I don't know if we want to follow through with some of those. Uh, it's and have a motion with some of those general conditions. Do the, ge the general conditions don't change Go on from site to site? Right? Not usually, although I think that the general, let me just check the general ones for. I'm looking at one that we had for. Um, T-Mobile. This was for. Yeah, there are nine, this was the 991 that ended up going through that we didn't hear last time. Okay, because there are some general conditions that are particular to wireless. Mm -hmm. uh, 990 was for antennas on the roof also, the one that came through administrative review, right? Instead of being heard last at our last meeting. That's the one I'm looking at, the, some of the conditions. That's uh, uh, their earlier. Their earlier. Okay. Well, they had this in their packet as an Does example. Does it have um, their earlier? Are four, and four, five, and six of the general conditions, um, their telecommunications general conditions, correct? I think there's the one that says in the event that uh, that there has to be a bond posted, uh, that in the right. event that it, the, the use was discontinued, the applicant has responsibility for removal. Uh, right, that is one of them. Uh, that's the first special condition, and in accordance with the provisions of Section 1011B, the applicant is required to post bond or other security satisfactory to the board in the amount of 20000 to mm -hmm. guarantee the removal of all telecommunications equipment allowed under the provisions of the special permit. No building permit will be issued until a bond or other security acceptable to the department has been provided. So that's a fairly that's standard. similar to what's in the T-Mobile one, but that's a little more detailed. Okay. I'm going to give you this, and this was in the T-Mobile thing, but or was this for or this was the T-Mobile's example from. This is right. Oh. <laughs> is that a more recent one now? This is actually it's this is 2010. Yeah, this is 1498, 13 mobile, 2006. If you want to refer to it and just make sure you're um, getting everything that you yeah, want you for a wireless it. special conditions. Okay. So I can use these and read them in and we can see what doesn't apply and what does apply. Mm -hmm. So these are the general conditions first, I'll read. Do I need to read those? Or are those going to be on there? The general conditions should, should be on there. We, yeah. It's okay. just stated with the general conditions. I think that would yeah, just say with the general conditions. Yeah, with the conditions. usual general The conditions. peculiar thing is that some of the general conditions of the T-Mobile one are actually special conditions on other wireless antennas. Mm -hmm. Antenna special permits. Okay. I can't understand why. But uh, are they all the same, regardless of like so? What we said with the usual general conditions and special conditions for wireless. Yeah, I mean, yes. the general conditions. I mean, when you think about it, they're almost sort of the common sense type of stuff. That right. The plans and specifications that are submitted by the applicant are indeed plans and specifications. Uh, no no building permit is issued until the SP has been recorded at the registry. Um, all utilities serving or traversing the site shall be underground. Uh, These are slightly different sites. The board in issuing the permit maintains continuing jurisdiction. continuing jurisdiction over this permit and after a duly advertised public hearing may attach other conditions. The wireless so, facility so shall be maintained in good and safe yeah, condition. Just do it. Yeah. So if those are the more Comprehensive general conditions, Christine. You mm -hmm. can probably. Well, I think they're the same six, aren't they? Same six. They're they're different. Oh, they are. <laughs> there are still six, but there are slight. Maybe they're just in a different order. Was well, that just an application? Exactly. 
This is from 2010. That oh, was part okay. of T-Mobile's as an example of the previous. Oh, okay. yeah. And then this that was actually T-Mobile's. Which, which one do you want to see? Yeah. Yeah. You want to see this one? Yeah, that one. The one you're this one? Yeah. And then the special conditions, if we have any special conditions. That's These were very oh, yeah, this is where we said this, the FCC standards, which is just a kind of a belt and suspenders kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think these really are different. Th this is like screen wall, and that's already part of the special permit, not part of the permit you're providing a screen wall. Proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, part of the proposal, right. Post bond is another one. So do we have any special conditions other than, I think I'd like to have one where the, during construction, the construction is coordinated with the, uh, the site owner to be as, to have as little disruption to the neighborhood as possible. Can we put a special condition like that? that the thing about that is, this, I mean, this is, you're going to have to call the police. The police will set up a Right, a, a normal construction sequence where they protect you if you're going to go into the street. These are normal construction. I think it's hard for us to say how. Conditions, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not any different from any. I mean, they must. But just that we said we encouraged loading and unloading to happen on Mass Ave. We can encourage the same so that there's not vehicles waiting on Higgins Street to deliver parts. Yeah, but for it's five a, it's hours. It's a construction and like related thing, not a practice, business practice. Yeah. It's a one time thing okay. where they have to coordinate. They, when you have construction With that's the, coming in and out, you have to talk to the police and say this is right. going to be happening. And you have and to get a, a permit if you want to put a yeah, and, cherry picker in the street. And everything needs to be with a review, with a view to enforcement. And how does he enforce I mean, the enforcement right. officer. I, wouldn't, I don't think we should get into construction, yeah. okay. construction practices as part of a special permit. But I don't know that we have any special conditions. Any recommendations? Well, I, I think the, we do have to special condition one about the twenty thousand dollars yeah, bond. Yeah, the bond. That's yeah. see, that was under general conditions in this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It doesn't seem to be consistently a general condition, so maybe we. It, it doesn't hurt to specify one. that. Okay. Um, and that also that language also includes, uh, or does it include? Where's the language? We have two that different ones here. What are you asking? Did it include the 20,000? Well, in the event that the uh, use were to cease, that the applicant has the responsibility to remove the equipment. I well, I guess that's covered by the bond, right? But mm -hmm. you know. This is the second horizon. There's another horizon. No, no, this is a new one. Okay. horizon that doesn't okay. exist on this. So, so the Probably. bond is posted to guarantee the removal. At the end of the the use of the of the of the building, so I think we're okay there. Um, and then the second special condition is that uh, the applicant has to continue operating in compliance with all FCC standards. So and the screen wall, Andy, we don't need to mention because that's has shown on the on the on the plan. On the plan. So Carol, basically, we're using the general conditions from this one that I'm going to hand back to. We're okay. using general conditions one, two, three, and six, and we're making four and five special conditions. Oh, you're looking at a different one than me. Yeah, I'm giving this back to Carol. This okay. is the one she handed me. Okay. There, here there's special conditions. Here there are four and five out of the one through six. Yeah. So what are we missing on the on the general conditions? Here? That's a good question. It's over here. Okay. Here's the general. So this is the other general. The final plans. This one doesn't mention the one about the utility work. Off-site and public rights away should be undertaken in accordance with the provisions of the bylaws of the town. Uh, file with the building inspector the names and telephone numbers of contact personnel can be reached during so the one that Bruce read. Is that on this one that you're getting back to? It's no, not. so we're putting together a, a mishmash <laughs> here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's list them again. 
So from the T-Mobile 2006 yeah. environmental design review permit that we have in front of us, we're taking items yeah. one, two, two, three. three. These are special now. Okay. Right. So four and five come special out of that and become three. special conditions one mm -hmm. and two. So six becomes number four. Yep. And then we're using the, uh, I don't know how you want to refer to this, the 990 Mass Ave, docket 3384. Yep. Request for special permit. Yep. From 2010. And we're going to pick up what appears in that as general conditions four, five, and six. Not three. Oh, four, four and five. Do we have three already? Oh, three, four, and five. You're right. Three, four, and five. five. We have six already. We have six already. Okay. Will be special conditions? They'll be general. They'll be, They'll be general, general conditions. So we have only two special conditions, and we have. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> seven, I think you're up to seven. Yeah. Seven. So just. And that way we'll hit all of them. For everybody who's, who's following along. Right. Dan has no clue what we're talking yeah. about. So well, I think I so have the one decision here that you're making reference to the 2006. So I can just sort of shorthand these. So the first general condition is plans and specs that we approve are the final plans and specs. Um, oh, wait a oh. So this is in here in case you hit but. You don't need one because there, this is not 50% design review mm -hmm. type of approval because that says we have approval so over this. Better. Yeah, so. The final plan is approved by the board. This permit everything shall everything be the here. final plan inspect submitted to the building inspector seems of the like town of Arlington. It seems like you're just you doing everything here. So I can take. Yeah. What's that one missing? You know, I think, I think Mike's right. If we use, this is the we 2010. This, this is what I started with, yeah. I think the we 2010 just this. Metro PCS. That's and the one. That's got it. This has got everything in yeah. it. The only thing we would do is eliminate, eliminate the special one. condition yeah. number yeah. three. Thank you, Mike. It's okay. It's good. Oh, wait, 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 this wait, wait, is what I started with. I was letting you go for a while, yeah, but I'm sitting there going, so it was kind of like that. Without special condition three, you said? Yeah, the very last one. That one is already covered by the by the plans right. submitted. Everything else is good. Is this the one I gave you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that was our motion. Yeah, I move. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank you very much. All right. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, Congratulations. 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 If I can text my client, they'll be very excited. So. We'll be yeah. sorry not to see you again at the next meeting. But. <laughs> Will the text work? Take no here? comment. Will Take the text a time off and then come back and see us on another one? Yeah. Have a good night. I know you guys have one more thing on your agenda. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, yeah, we'll be right um, You stayed agreeable through the whole yes. ordeal. Thank you. And did you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I make a suggestion on the yes. agenda, okay. just for a second? Yes. Um, if we, should we approve the minutes first in the event that we do have to go to executive session? That way when we come out of executive session, the only thing we have left is adjournment, and sure. therefore <laughs> sure. okay folks can, uh, can leave who uh, need to leave. Does that make some sense? Sure. Okay, if we even go into executive session. Okay, so the minutes. I'm not saying that we'll we will, that but if we have to, that can be our last thing that we do. Okay, so let me just go around the table here. If anybody has any changes to the minutes or comments. Can I just clarify for a moment, please? You said the 2010 Metro PCS. That was a Metro PCS for 1098? I think so. Okay. 1098 or give you this so you can write down the docket number. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to hold on to that? No, I should have that. Okay. I think I, I had copied that for you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Okay, I have a few things. Um, right. not, not too much. So, uh, first page, third paragraph on the bottom where I asked about the canopy structure. Um, second sentence, uh, Mr. Sarindola stated it was aircraft quality and holds overflow parking. I was just going to say, say, of motorcycles for sale, not overflow parking for other parking purposes. Okay. Uh, you can also just change parking to inventory. Yeah, it, that's overflow inventory is fine. That's more okay. succinct. Um, page two, the fourth full paragraph in the middle, where Ms. Sapinski commented, the Greater Boston Motorsports have insignia on the doors of both vehicles. Just a question, did you mean vehicles or buildings? Uh, vehicles. Okay, then that can stand. Um, third page, first full paragraph, last sentence. It reads, the public streets are treated like a parking lot for your employees, but it's sort of, I think it's better just to say GBMS employees instead of your. I know that the minutes are trying to sort of step into the, into the, the words of the, of the speaker, but it's a little confusing. Um, last paragraph on that page, uh, the very last phrase that says, based on firm conditions, I think we really want to say current conditions. We're talking about uh, parking that might be available or storage that could be made available if parking and fire were to be taken over by the applicant. So and what we're saying is that we have to rule on what's currently the situation. Um, On the fourth page, near the very bottom, I didn't want to uh, suggest, and I, I hope I didn't say this, that the underlying special permit is invalid. That's the way it reads. I would say, I, I, I hope what I said was, which the property owner has violated and could be revoked. Underlying like special permit. Because the special permit's valid, it was just validly issued. It's just not in, it's not in compliance. With I understand. I'm just trying to figure out how, how should that be said. What should we do as the edit? Okay. Um, the underlying special which the permit. applicant has failed to comply with, or something like that. But um, you don't want to say it is invalid, correct? You wanted to I say. I don't want to say it's invalid because that suggests that it was never. The special permit has been violated? Has been violated, it's fine. Okay. That's all I have. Then we have two very small things. Uh, on the uh, first full paragraph on the second page. Uh, just three lines down, Mr. Kerr asked about the merchandise. Mr. Kerr questioned the appearance of the canopy, pointing out that it is moldy, not molded. Um, <laughs> a little dirt, maybe, but moldy, I think, is probably the best stuff. Um, the other thing is, it's just a strange one on the fourth page. Um, one, two, three, four, five uh, paragraphs up from the bottom. It's just that the fifteen thousand forty dollars is on two lines, which is a little strange. Mm. What page you want? That's the fourth page. Oh, I see it now. Oh, yeah, I moved it. That's all I have. Moved it. Okay. I don't have anything. I'll set two. Oh, I've got all this right on my okay. Um, okay, I have a few things. Documents used. I think we need the draft sign criteria listed there? Could we discuss that? Draft sign criteria for administrative review? I don't know if that's what we call it. Okay, 
the uh, one, two, three, fourth paragraph on the first page, the last sentence. Uh, I think instead of saying, and puts two rows of motorcycle parking for both display and repair motorcycles. Are we in the first page? The fourth Oh, line. I see it. Thank you. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. Greater Boston Motorsports keeps the front looking neat and puts two rows of motorcycles parking for both display and repair motorcycles. And so we could say, and has motorcycles on display along with those awaiting repair or pickup. And I think Christine has all these typed up, right? Or read and read that you would give to Carol. Um, I do. That would be wonderful. I have all mine typed up, yeah. Okay, so I'll just go through them quickly. Uh, the second paragraph on the second page. Mr. The second line of that paragraph. I wanted to add on um, being kept open at the end of that line, along with spaces nine and ten being kept open. That wasn't real clear. And then in the next sentence, he continued to say that the difference is Greater Boston Motorsports has no tenants except for the Ferrati Studio, which doesn't need parking. Is what he I said. think we're kind of. I, I think maybe the the paragraphs changed. Um, yeah, I was having problems well, following through. Maybe it's the way I printed it. Yeah, I think it's because you've got added words, so it kind of moved lines down. Mm. So, which paragraph? <laughs> I don't know what page, okay. if this is the same page, even. Well, what is the paragraph what does that begins with, with uh, Mr. Kayer stated that this is the third time the board has talked about 1098. Oh, it's the carryover paragraph. Okay. Okay. First oh, page carryover paragraph. paragraph. Okay. So, so that was the second sentence, yep. add on being kept open, and the third second sentence, um, after has no tenants, add in except for the karate studio, which doesn't need parking. This is what he stated. And then the next paragraph, the second sentence, Mr. Serendula stated it was old bike parking. I was going to add it was on a concrete pad from old bike parking. Okay, and then if we go down three more paragraphs to the one that starts with Mr. Gunnell. The sentence, one, two, three, it's the fourth sentence that starts with Mr. Serendula said they would make a loading area in the driveway. I wanted to add when Arlington Tire is no longer occupying space and that the trucks and trailers could be customer vehicles. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's <laughs> That's what I remember saying. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay. okay, the paragraph that starts with Mr. West, which is two paragraphs down from the last one I was at. Mr. West reviewed that between the karate studio, Grady Frost, and Motorsports, the second floor occupant, and Arlington Tire, all these occupants are only in need of 10 parking spaces. I think Mr. West questioned mm -hmm. okay. rather than reviewed. And the next paragraph, um, the second sentence that starts with Mr. Kerr clarified that two are supposed to be on the site for previous tenants. Wasn't it 21? I think you're right, yeah. 21 was yeah. supposed to be on I site. think that's exactly right, yeah. Then the next paragraph, 
I will give you these, Carol. Okay. Uh, Mr. West stated that items need to be removed from the buffer area. I think he said from the sidewalk and the buffer area with the pad. Yeah. You were talking Sounds about right. the front sidewalk. And there's like the ATV vehicles. And then this one I thought was rather important just because it gives us the total number of parking. The next paragraph, Mr. Fitzsimmons asked how many employees arrived by motorcycle. Mr. Sarandula said 50%, um, which is about six to eight. Because that gave us an idea of his total number of employees were between 12 and 16. So this is the paragraph that is towards the end of page three, I believe. It starts with Andrew Coppola. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, um, in that sentence, after parking in no parking zones, mm -hmm. I wanted to add, and too close to corners on Lower Robbins Road. Our issues, just to clarify that. And then Mr. Kopel, the last sentence in that paragraph, recommends having a handout on consideration for neighbors on parking and the rules. I wanted to add for both employees and customers. Okay. Okay, then the, the paragraph two down from that that starts with the board asks if there were any other public comments. There were none. Mr. Sarandola said that he appreciates the comments, and he also said and should be able to immediately address 80%, if not all of them. Paragraphs after the one that has the 15,040 number yeah. in it. Okay. So it begins with Ms. Pinsky asked how long a service visit lasts. Mr. Klasnik replied about one hour. And then typically it is one person with a laptop and a car that can park on the street. Oh yeah, down at the very bottom, that's where I was saying we don't want to call the special permit invalid. We just want to say that it's in viol that, that the okay. applicant's in violation. You're going to give her yours too? Yeah. I'll say it's the Bruce's. Okay, then after um, the paragraph where Ms. Kowalski stated that the board does not have the right to revoke the previously issued special permit. Um, we were, we were discussing the fines, and we pointed to, I wanted to say Ms. Sipinski pointed to Mr. Bryan's June 27, 2014 letter where he outlined fines and actions that could be taken, and the criminal actions would need Board of Selectmen approval. So I wanted to add that in. Just 
<laughs> these tiger fish. Okay, that's it. <laughs> All right, I'll hand you these. Do you have a motion? I move to approve as amended. Second. Okay. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go, Carol. Thank you. Amy has any problems ever? Ask me. Okay. <laughs> I could email her that too if it's easier. Uh, yes. Scratch out the great. ones that I scratched out while I was sitting here. Do you want me to do that? Just email it to her? Um, sure. Okay. You'll show them either track changes or the way you've indicated that them in red. You'll yes. show them. Okay. I'll show them in red like that. Because on this copy, I've just put an, uh, a mark where you have changes. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so we have one more agenda item. And this is to discuss um, the requests for proposals. Um, I, I would suggest, uh, you could discuss this right now in executive session, but if you could avoid an exec executive session, that's always better. I want the board to, um, you, you're going to need to consider a selection team to review the requests for proposals, and I will also need to establish a not less than amount for rent. I would suggest that the board consider designating someone from the board to work with me on the selection team. It can be one or two people on the selection team, but also um, a, a member to work with me on um, a recommendation on that not to not less than amount for the three uh, requests for proposals. If we get into discussing it now, you will need to talk a little bit about rent strategy, and that does in, um, get into your negotiating position. That would entail an executive session, um, but I don't really think. It's necessary to get that far right now, so. And are we I, even prepared to discuss that? Yeah, that today? Does I have good. done some work on preparing a suggestion for rental rates for the three spaces, for the three requests for proposal, but there's a, there's strategy, and if you want to get into discussing that now, I would recommend that you go into executive session because if that is public record, then the um, the proposers, the people responding to the request for proposal, would have that information, and mm -hmm. it's you, you kind of lose your negotiating position. So the alternative I'm asking the board to consider would be to delegate someone to designate someone to work with me on setting uh, recommendations for those rent, those not less than amounts, and to begin thinking about a strategy on what type of rent to then negotiate with the successful responder and to name a member or possibly two members to work with me at, to screen the requests for proposals. And we're also looking at Christine, uh, the Director of Health and Human Services being Well, I on asked that the board. town manager um, if he had any suggestions, he asked that Eve, um, the new management analyst, be on the screening panel that the board consider including her. Eve, the new management analyst. Do you remember Mike Fountain, who yeah. was in management? Um, the uh, person who took over for his position about a week ago. Uh, Mike um, went to his uh, wife got a job in oh. Nia, and oh, wow. he relocated. So it was a that was a, a oh, loss because he was very good. Oh, he was very, was very good, good yeah. for him, and he got a very good job in the city. Um, where they relocated, and his replacement started about a week ago, and the town manager asked the board to consider including her in the review panel, the review team. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So that would be instead of himself, right? Instead yes. Of the town she would be from the town manager's office. Mm -hmm. And then Christine would be on the panel at least maybe for Central I, school. I would oh. suggest that the, I don't think she needs to be on the panel. I would suggest that if you wanted some input 
Okay. Or guidance. Just like town council will also provide the input. Town council would um, be reviewing the model lease that has to be part of the request for proposal and would work on the final lease. Would be participating in any final negotiations. So I don't know who would be most qualified or interested. You know, Mike's had a lot of history with the building. I have, in but I'm not great with <laughs> the the real estate stuff itself. But I'm, I mean, I'm happy to, to do things. Um, Maybe Bruce is more I'll, in the real estate. I don't know. Or Andrew. Or Andrew. Andrew. I'd be happy to volunteer. Okay. I'd be comfortable with that. Um, for the selection committee or for looking at the rates, or they could be one and the same person, I guess. If they're one and the same, we'd be happy to do both. One and the same, we'd be happy to do yeah. both. Do we want to have two people? It's less than a quorum, so it's acceptable. And if Andrew's one, we could either have Bruce or Mike as I'll, the second one? I'll be glad to follow. Okay. Mike, you're really <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm happy to dig in on anything, but that's good. Good. I approve that volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> does, that, does that have to be a motion? No, well, I think the chair, in her wisdom, can designate who she wants to be the uh, the volunteers. I don't think that needs to be a motion. You can just say. Okay. That's right. So I'd like to designate Andrew and Bruce be on the selection committee and for Andrew to look at the rental rates with Carol. Thank and the you. Qualification. And that includes looking at the qualifications and the RFP in general. Right, and, and making a recommendation on the um, to the board. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Okay. One last motion we need. Motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, think Andrew, I think Andrew won. Okay, Andrew seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thanks.